Very few things reach the level of longevity and influence that Dragon Ball has achieved over the years. Akira Toriyama's take on the classic tale of Sun Wukong and his adventures captured the hearts and minds of fans all across the world. Legendary fights, enormous power levels, hilarious gags, it has it all. And throughout the years, fans have flocked to every new iteration, every game, every movie. Dragon Ball has also inspired plenty of artists to strike it out on their own as well. So we've collected a huge pile of Dragon Ball facts and trivia for you to enjoy today. Welcome back to Channel Frederator. I'm Keegan and I've got quite the mega marathon ready to roll. Over 500 facts about Dragon Ball, from its humble origins to the mega franchise that it is today. Get ready and maybe grab a senzu bean or two because this is going to be one heck of a journey. We'll start off with a timeline to ensure that the way that things are in your brain match with the way that things actually happened. We don't want anybody getting confused, especially when it comes to time travel. The team at Channel Frederator have put together a pretty exhaustive history for the series known as the Complete Dragon Ball Timeline. Enjoy! The Dragon Ball series is a classic, and I highly doubt that there's anyone in the world who doesn't know what it is, or at least who Goku is. And if he isn't known by someone, then I'm certain that whoever you're asking has at least witnessed Super Saiyan before, either through clips, explanations, or memes. At the time I'm making this video, we're only five days past the 37th anniversary of the release of the first chapter of Dragon Ball's original series, which saw the rise of Goku to stardom. Inspired by the Chinese novel Journey to the West, Goku would later on, through the Z era, grow to take inspiration from various other series, such as Superman, Alien, Terminator, and A Thousand and One Arabian Nights. Beyond that, we got the glorious, and depending on who you ask, better off forgotten or slightly underrated series Dragon Ball GT, as well as the more acclaimed series Dragon Ball Super, which is currently still in serialization, though it's still on hiatus after finishing the Granola Saga. Given the release of the new Dragon Ball Super superhero movie, as well as the 37th anniversary, which we're slightly late for, sorry Dragon Ball, we thought it would be best to cover a timeline of the Dragon Ball series. We'll be covering both designated canon and non-canon material in this composite timeline, so don't let that confuse you, but with that out of the way, let's get into it. Time Immemorial Majin Buu is formed. He begins to wreak havoc on the universe, not having yet absorbed the Grand Supreme Kai, currently still in his pure form, better known as Kid Buu. He spends multiple cycles between destruction and hibernation, not too unlike Beerus, in which Buu slowly absorbs the worst aspects of life in the universe, becoming progressively more and more violent. Year 41 of the Divine Calendar the mysterious being known only as Zalama forms the Super Dragon Balls, of which all other Dragon Balls are derived from. Essentially, the namesake of the series is created. The year after, according to the Divine Calendar, Zalama would patent the unique star shapes at the center of each ball that can be viewed the same regardless of what angle you view them from. 100 million years before the First Age, King Kai's planet is confirmed to exist. 75 million years before the First Age, the 15th generation Supreme Kai, also known by the moniker Old Kai, is sealed inside of the Z-Sword by Beerus after an argument over some trifling thing over one of their once-per-thousand-year meetings. In the same time frame, Kronoa and Mechikabura battle over the position of Supreme Kai of Time, in which she would seal Mechikabura away into the crack of time, 10 million years before the First Age. The evil Moro would threaten Universe 7 in his endless hunger to devour the universe. The Grand Supreme Kai of Universe 7 would use his powers to steal away Moro's magic, and would allow Moro to be imprisoned by the Galactic Patrol, who would attempt to execute Moro multiple times, but fail each time. Five million years before the First Age. The evil wizard Bibbidi discovers Majin Buu, who he frees and attempts and mostly fails to control. Together they destroy multiple planets, and according to Supreme Kai Shin, an entire galaxy before they begin their assault on the Kai. The North and West Supreme Kais are killed, while on the South and Grand Supreme Kais are absorbed by the pure kid form Majin Buu, of which he gains the concepts of love and peace, which forms the Innocent Buu version, which stands at an odd juxtaposition of loving kindness and fear-mongering chaos. Bibidi takes the chance through Buu's docile nature to seal him into a ball on Earth. East Supreme Kai Shin, now just known as the Supreme Kai, due to the loss of his comrades, kills Bibidi to prevent Buu from reawakening. Unbeknownst to Shin at the time, Bibidi possessed a child named Babidi who would begin forming plans of revenge against the entire universe. Okay, now we're gonna get into some weird specific numbers here. 239,906 years before the First Age. Belmod becomes the destroyer god of Universe 11 in opposition to his friend Gichin's beliefs. Belmod leaves the Pride Troopers to do so. 239,856 years before the First Age. 
Zeno holds an all-universe game of hide-and-seek that involved the destroyer gods of the Twelve Universes. However, Beerus fell asleep before the game started, causing the event to be cancelled, and Zeno to become wrathful. The deities of the other eleven universes attempt to console Zeno, which bred disdain for Beerus in all of the other universes. In an unrelated event, in an unspecified point in time before this event, Zeno had already erased six of the eighteen universes, reducing the number to twelve, which can further explain why Beerus' sleeping habits have caused hatred of him to form in all of the other universes. 6,233 years before the First Age. The mighty hero Majoran of the Northern Galaxy fought off an evil army of alien invaders. During this battle, he died, but due to his heroic actions, he was allowed to keep his body after death and allowed to train with King Kai on the Grand Kai's world. 4,237 years before the First Age. Garlic Jr.'s ancestors arrive on Earth from their home planet, the Machio Star, where they decide to live. 2,833 years before the First Age. The hero Sarta from the Northern Galaxy defends his world from a meteorite impact. The deed is recognized after the death of Sarta, who is allowed to keep his body and train with King Kai on the Grand Kai's planet. 1,104 years before the First Age. Bardock finds himself awakening on an ancient planet where he finds its inhabitants are being tortured by a space pirate ancestor of Frieza and King Cold. Remembering events which had not yet taken place due to Bardock's time travel, he awakens the Super Saiyan state and brutally beats Chilled to death, who tells his subordinates to beware of the legendary Super Saiyan. 739 years before the First Age, Princess Snake becomes the Princess of Snake Way and builds her castle at around the midway point. 238 years before the First Age, the Saiyan people of planet Sadala enter a civil war in which the good-hearted Saiyans of the same line as Giblet and Shallot hope to stop their evil counterparts, of which Cumber is one from wreaking havoc on the universe further. This conflict brings out the best and worst out of Yamoshi, in which they, through the help of their friends, become the first Super Saiyan god to fight the evil Saiyans. However, before he can do all too much, his transformation gives out. Yamoshi then gives in to his primal desires and becomes a legendary Super Saiyan whose wrath is so great that he destroyed himself alongside planet Sadala. Few Saiyans escape the planet alive. 237 years before the First Age, Turtle is born. He does not yet know the friendship he will find in the yet-to-be-born Master Roshi. 226 years before the First Age, Herudagarn is reborn on planet Konats under the influence of an evil group of wizards. It begins to lay waste to the planet, forcing a good Kontatsian wizard to use an enchanted sword to sever the beast in two, while Tapion and his little brother Minosha use magical ocarinas to seal the two halves of the beast into themselves. At some point, they then seal themselves into magical music boxes to further ensure that the beast cannot escape. These music boxes are sent to opposite sides of the universe, and Tapion and Minosha never see each other again. Well, oh, it's kind of sad. 220 years before the First Age, the Master Assassin Hit is born in Universe 7. It's around the same time that Planet Sadala is forced to do battle with the Demon Saiyan who had awakened the same legendary Super Saiyan powers that only Kale would later awaken herself. 50 years before the First Age, Corin the Cat and Bandages the Mummy are both born. All right, now we're actually moving into ages. Age 176, Fangs the Vampire is born. Age 250. Fortune Teller Baba begins her fortune telling business. At around the same time, Yahoi, the last independent state on the face of the earth, becomes a part of the world government. Age 261. King Yema travels through the Snake Way to King Kai's planet where he trains with the martial arts master. During this time, Princess Snake falls in love with King Yema. During the same time, a violent storm rages on planet Namek, which forces the Namekian Kadis to send his son to Earth. The sun would later split into two to become Piccolo and Kami. Lord Slug and Guru are the only ones left alive on planet Namek. Actually, this next thing I'm about to say is in no way official, but it is a personal belief of our writer that the planet Namek's sudden change in ecosystem for the worst was caused by the Namekian Dragon Balls, which would have spawned shadow dragons from overuse. This would likely lead to the Dragon Balls being bigger, less powerful, and guarded ferociously so that only the most worthy of wishes would be granted. This belief spawns from GT's Shadow Dragon Saga, in which the Earth goes under a similar change. The last bit is just speculation though, and not part of the timeline, as it's never confirmed what caused this event. Age 430, 
Master Roshi is born. The year after, the nameless Namekian and Garlic Sr. become apprentices to the Earth's Guardian in hopes of replacing him when he retires. Age 448. Master Roshi turns 18 where he falls in love with Fanfan. This causes a rift between Roshi and Master Shen. Two years later, Roshi would climb Korin's tower to begin his training to obtain the sacred water. Age 451. King Kai's planet is destroyed by Beerus after a hide-and-seek match gone wrong. Age 453. Roshi obtains the sacred water after three years of training with Master Korin. Age 459. Mercenary Tao is born. Age 461. The child of Katas is chosen to succeed the Guardian to the throne, but only if he can remove the darkness from his heart. This causes the being to split into two halves, one with the good half of the Namekian and one with the bad half. The good half goes on to be named Kami, and the bad half goes on to be named Demon King Piccolo. The evil Demon King Piccolo goes about to conquer the world, but is sealed into a rice cooker by Master Mutaito. The move used is the Evil Containment Wave, the move of which possessing enough strain to kill Master Mutaito after its usage. Man, maybe this guy should train with King Kai too. Later, during the same year, Garlic Sr. rises up against Kami and plans to take the throne by force. However, he's defeated and sealed away by Kami. Unbeknownst to Kami, Garlic Sr. had a child who bore his name and would seek revenge at a later date. Another thing to note is that at some unknown time before this split, the nameless Namekian was known to have tried his hand at creating Dragon Balls of his own. These Dragon Balls would later become known as the Black Star Dragon Balls, and these Dragon Balls are deemed too much of a threat to the world to be used and are later sealed away. Age 467 the four directional kings of the universe, King Kai, South Kai, West Kai, and East Kai, all gather together for one of their few reunions. That goes about as well as you'd expect. Age 470. Kami creates the Dragon Balls that we all know and love. Age 474. Demon King Debura sends an underling to Earth to inspect it. Age 550. The first Saiyans land on planet Plant after the destruction of Sadala years earlier. They settle in the Wastelands. It's unknown whether the Saiyans choose to live here because of their disdain for a life of the Tuffles, or if the Tuffles force them to live there due to their disdain of the Saiyans. Age 553. Roshi starts a dirty magazine collection. Really? Th this is in the timeline? Alright, this, this is a more comprehensive timeline than I thought it would be. Age 650. Roshi finds a Dragon Ball washed up on the shores of his island. Age 658. Grandpa Gohan is born. This is the start of an important point in the legend of, I don't know, some guy named Goku? Age 662. Kami tells Mr. Popo of what he can remember of his childhood. It's from this that Mr. Popo learns to understand Kami's spaceship, where it's located, and how to speak Namekian. Age 670. Tokunoshin Omori is born. Age 681. C6 is buried in the Nemuria ruins. This is the start of an important moment in Gohan's training. And by Gohan, I mean Goku's son, not Grandpa Gohan, who I just mentioned, in whom Goku's son is respectively named after. Like, the Go Gohan younger, the, the one who's... yeah. Okay, birthday lightning round. Age 689, Manpuku Okawari is born. Age 698, Boss Rabbit is born. Age 703, Hondawara is born. Age 703 to 712, Nappa is born. The specific year is kinda iffy. Age 706, Hijiki is born. Age 707, Kurikitan Soramame is born. Age 709, Asao is born. Age 710, King Chapa is born and the 13th World Martial Arts Tournament is held with Master Roshi becoming the winner. Age 711, Tamagoro Katayude is born. Intermission, age 712. Dr. Brief forms the Capsule Corporation based around his revolutionary invention known as the Hoi Poi Capsule. The inventions here make the Brief's family the richest and most influential entrepreneurs on the face of the planet. During the same year, Dr. Wheelow begins to think of ways to enslave the human race. But a freak weather storm seals him behind an eternal wall of ice with only Dr. Cochin being left free. I guess God got him, right? Age 713, Mozuku is born. Age 715, Emperor Pilaf and Ninja Murasaki are born. Age 716, Mount Kiwi erupts. The Hikui birds died out, leaving only an egg. Age 717, Jiren and Senbei Norimaki are born. Age 719, Manwolf is born. Age 720, Taiz and Akira are born. Age 720 to 730. The Great Saiyan Tuffle War begins for ownership of the planet Plant. During this war, both sides reach a stalemate until a once-per-century full moon occurs and allows the Saiyans to turn into great apes. 
At this point, the tide of the war is both turned, and the war itself ends in a single night. At this time, the Tuffle King transfers his cells and memories into a parasitic organism which would later come to be known merely by the moniker Baby. At the exact same time, Dr. Raichi, who had been working on a Tuffle super weapon with which to eradicate all Saiyans, is killed during the Great Ape attack. Raichi's body, alongside his creation, Hachiyak, are sent to space. Age 721, Nam and Anazuki are born. Age 722, Midori Norimaki and General Blue are born. Age 726, Ranfan, likely not the same one that Roshi knew, and Aoi Kimidori are born. Age 730, Mercenary Tao begins his career as a... mercenary. Taro Soramame and Sururin Sun are also born at this time. Age 731, Granola is born. The Saiyans are annexed by the galactic overlord King Cold and start conquering plants to sell. King Vegeta marries his queen. Age 732, Vegeta and Broly are both born. The DBS version, there are two versions, one canon and the other non-canon. We'll separate them as such. One will be DBS Broly, which is the canon one that appears in the Dragon Ball Super Superhero movie, and the other is Z Broly, who appeared in Dragon Ball Z and is eventually resurrected as Bio Broly in the non-canon timeline. At the same time, the events of the DBS Broly movie's opening scenes take place. King Cold transfers ownership of the Cold Force to Frieza, who renames it the Frieza Force and makes a show of power to maintain respect. Broly's power threatens King Vegeta, who sends him to the planetoid Vampa to live in exile. This is opposed to Z Broly's fate, which will be detailed in a few moments. Age 733, Bulma, Yamcha, and Tian Shinhan are born. Age 733, but May 8th specifically. Earth's current king, King Furry, is sworn in. Between age 733 and 737, Tarbul is born. Age 734, Goku, during the DBS timeline, is born. The Saiyans invade planet Serial, where all Serialians are eradicated by the Saiyans, save for Granola, who's spared by Bardock. Monaco is later spared as well. The Heaters show up too and talk about their plans to overthrow Frieza. Bardock overhears them, and a battle between Bardock and Gas takes place, though Bardock just manages to win and escape with his life. Age 735, Yajirobe is born, and Baby devises the universal tufflization plan in order to revive the tuffles after the Saiyans wipe them out. Frieza starts to feel misgivings toward the Saiyans. Age 736, Krillin and Hercule Satan are born. Age 737, the non-canon timeline Goku is born. The same day as Goku, Z Broly is born. The events of Bardock and the father of Goku occur in which Bardock receives the ability to see the future by an alien on a planet that he and his squad have conquered. Bardock's team ends up eradicated by Dodoria, with Bardock as the only survivor. Elsewhere, King Vegeta, threatened by Z Broly's power, attempts to stab the infant to death and kill Paragus, leaving them in a trash pit. Bardock returns to warn the Saiyans about Frieza's treachery. Frieza himself decides to eradicate the Saiyans according to Beerus' orders in the canon timeline. In the non-canon timeline, he just destroys them for the hell of it. Planet Vegeta is destroyed and Goku is sent away from the planet, only being witnessed by Cooler, who decides not to intervene as he believes Frieza should clean up his own messes. Z Broly awakens in terror and escapes with his father by channeling his Super Saiyan power, further shredding the infant's mind. Dragon Ball Minus's events occur, and the Jocko the Galactic Patrolman manga takes place. Goku lands on Earth and is found by Grandpa Gohan. Age 738. Chiaotzu is born. Age 739. A fire spirit sets Pleasant Mountain, the Ox King and Chi Chi's home, on fire. The mountain is renamed Mountain Frypan. The Oracle Fish predicts that Beerus will meet an enemy of threat in 39 years, forcing Beerus to go to sleep early. Sometime during the 39 years of rest, Beerus has a prophetic dream about a Super Saiyan God who will give him a glorious battle. Age 740, Oolong, Poir, and Suno are born. Krillin begins his training at the Oren Temple. A parasitic organism with mind control abilities and the memory of Tuffles arrives on planet M2. Dr. Mew finds it and is taken over by it. He uses the knowledge of advanced technology gained from the memories to begin plans to take over his world. Age 744, Hoi claims to have started his search of Earth for Tapion. Age 745, Senbei Norimaki creates Arale Norimaki. Age 747, Yamcha meets Poir. Age 748, the immortal phoenix that Roshi was raising dies of food poisoning. Turtle gets lost while gathering mushrooms. Age 749, 
During the first 10 days of April, Bulma enters senior high school in West City. Bulma discovers the two-star Dragon Ball in her basement. Omori, Jocko, Tite, and Katayude reunite on the former's island for a temporary reunion. Bulma discovers the five-star Dragon Ball in a cave to the north. From here on, the events of the original Dragon Ball series occur. Age 749, Bulma and Goku meet for the first time. During this time, she convinces him to give her his Dragon Ball, but in exchange, he decides to follow her on her adventure. Along the way, they collect the rest of the Dragon Balls, meet Roshi, Oolong, Poir, and Yamcha, Goku learns his signature move, the Kamehameha Wave, they eventually are captured by Emperor Pilaf, who wants the wish for world domination, but Oolong hijacks the wish, wishing for a pair of women's underwear. They attempt to kill Goku and friends, but they escape when Goku transforms into a great ape. Goku nearly kills everyone, but is stopped when his tail is cut off. The group goes their own separate ways, as Goku decides to train with Roshi. Goku and Krillin meet and begin their hard work, training under Roshi to grow stronger, smarter, and healthier. Age 750 Goku and Krillin train until around the time of May, where they'll join the 21st World Martial Arts Tournament. During this same year, the Red Ribbon Army begins searching for the Dragon Balls. Goku takes second place during the tournament, losing only to Jackie Chun, who was actually Master Roshi in disguise. After this, Goku and the Red Ribbon Army begin to search for the Dragon Balls. After defeating Colonel Silver, Goku ends up in Jingle Village, where he takes down White Corp and Muscle Tower. Goku fights General Blue, and their fight takes them to Penguin Village, where Arali Norimaki defeats General Blue. General Blue is killed by Mercenary Tao, and Tao proceeds to beat Goku, who then climbs Korin's tower. Upon reaching the top, he begins to train to drink the sacred water. Once he drinks the water, he defeats Mercenary Tao and single-handedly destroys the entire Red Ribbon army, except for Dr. Gero, who escapes with his life to begin planning his revenge. Goku then meets fortune teller Baba and fights in her arena where he meets Grandpa Gohan again for the first time in years since the latter's death. Age 750 to 753. Goku begins his training to run around the world. In Chao Village, he fights Plague and Terror. Goku meets Master Chin and fights Sky Dragon in the Master of Martial Arts contest. Goku enters the demon world and fights Shula. Goku saves Inoshikajo and meets Chien Shinhan for the first time. Age 753. Ron Fon marries a man named Trunks and becomes a housewife. And no, it's not the Trunks you're thinking of, he hasn't been born yet. Goku swims to Papaya Island, where the 22nd World Martial Arts Tournament will take place. Chen Shinhan wins the tournament. Goku comes in second place, and Krillin is killed by Tambourine, and King Piccolo appears. Goku meets Yajirobe and soon kills Tambourine. Goku crosses paths with Piccolo and is easily defeated. Master Roshi and Shoutsu are killed by King Piccolo, who then uses the Dragon Balls to restore his youth. He attacks the king's castle and takes over Earth. Yajirobe climbs Korin Tower while carrying Goku. Goku drinks the sacred water and kills King Piccolo. Piccolo gives birth to his reincarnation, Piccolo Jr. Goku reaches the lookout and trains there for the next three years with Mr. Popo and Kami. Age 753 to 756. Goku begins his training on Kami's lookout. Kami restores the planet's moon. For safety reasons, he also permanently removes Goku's tail so that he can never become a great ape again. Tien, Yamcha, Krillin, and Xiaotzu climb Korin Tower. After training under Korin, they split up and train on their own for the remaining time before the 23rd World Martial Arts Tournament. Age 756. Videl, Sharpner, Arasa, and most of Gohan's other schoolmates at Orange Star High School are born. Videl's mother dies sometime after her daughter's birth. The 23rd World Martial Arts Tournament takes place. Goku becomes engaged to Chi-Chi. Goku defeats Piccolo Jr. and wins the tournament. Planning for Goku and Chi-Chi's wedding begins, but a mysterious fire erupts and traps the Ox King inside with Chi-Chi's wedding dress. Goku travels to Mount Gogyo, where he meets his dead grandfather again. He's able to stop the flames around the Ox King's castle. Goku and Chi-Chi are married, and Goku and Chi-Chi's first child is born. They name him Gohan, after Goku's grandfather. Age 757. Dr. Hedo is born. Age 759, Idasa is born. Both of Pigoro's parents die in a tsunami, with him being the only sole survivor of the disaster. Age 760, Ikose is born. Age 760 to 770, Dr. Mew finds Rildo and turns him into a machine mutant. Rildo uses his powers to complete the conquest of Planet M2. The machine mutants begin gathering energy for Baby. And from here on, the events of Dragon Ball Z occur. Age 761. The events of Dead Zone occur. Here, Gohan is kidnapped by Garlic Jr. in an attempt to get the four-star Dragon Ball. With it, Garlic Jr. wishes for immortality. 
Goku and Piccolo put their differences aside to fight Garlic Jr., but in the end, it requires Gohan in a fit of rage to send Garlic Jr. into the dead zone where he's sealed up. After this, Vegeta, Nappa, and Raditz purge Planet Sheik in preparation for its sale. Three days after, they receive an audience with Emperor Frieza, where they later discuss plans to overthrow him. Raditz is then sent to recruit his younger brother, Kakarot, who escaped the destruction of Planet Vegeta by a hair to join them. Raditz lands on Earth and is killed by Piccolo's special beam cannon alongside Goku. Age 762. Goku arrives at King Kai's planet to train. Tian, Chiaozu, Yajirobe, Krillin, and Yamcha all arrive at the lookout to train. Gohan trains for a year with Piccolo, Vegeta and Nappa arrive on Earth, and Goku is revived. In a battle against Nappa, Yamcha, Tien, Chiaozu, and Piccolo are killed. Goku arrives and maims Nappa, who is then killed by Vegeta for failure. Goku and Vegeta have their epic battle, which spawns a rivalry that will last for ages. Goku manages to beat Vegeta with the help of Gohan, Krillin, and Yajirobe. Vegeta escapes. One of Gero's robots takes a blood sample from various warriors here. The Z fighters are put in the hospital. After this, the events of the world's strongest Tree of Might and Lord Slug take place, in which Goku defeats Dr. Wheelow, defeats another Saiyan named Turles, and achieves a pseudo-Super Saiyan form to defeat Lord Slug. Gohan, Krillin, and Bulma, with the help of Mr. Popo, leave Earth for Namek, where they encounter children in a lost spaceship and then land on a false planet Namek. Upon landing on planet Namek, they find it overrun by Frieza's army, who's also searching for Dragon Balls due to listening in on the Saiyans' conversation from their battle with Piccolo. They rescue Dende. Goku later leaves for Planet Namek, where he trains himself nearly to death multiple times. Vegeta kills Kui and takes a few Dragon Balls for himself. Gohan and Krillin have their potential unlocked by Grand Elder Guru. Frieza maims Nail. The Ginyu Force arrive. The Ginyu Force nearly kills Gohan, Krillin, and Vegeta. Goku shows up and single-handedly defeats the Ginyu Force, while Frieza murders each one. Ginyu escapes in the body of a frog. Goku is healed in, essentially, Frieza's back to tank. Gohan and Krillin escape from a sleeping Vegeta and begin to make wishes to revive everyone killed during the Saiyan invasion and then wish for Piccolo to come to planet Namek. Guru dies and takes Porunga with him before a third wish can be granted. Vegeta and Frieza are angered. Piccolo fuses with Nail. A battle between Gohan, Krillin, Piccolo, and Vegeta against Frieza takes place where they manage to push Frieza into his fourth and final form. Goku wakes up as Vegeta is killed. Goku pushes Frieza and nearly kills him with a spirit bomb. Frieza mortally wounds Piccolo and kills Krillin, which awakens Goku's Super Saiyan form. Goku fights Frieza, who begins the process of Namek's destruction. Frieza defeats himself with his Death Saucer's technique he learned from Krillin's Destructo Disc. Goku attempts to spare Frieza, but defeats him when he's betrayed by Frieza, leaving Frieza for dead. Goku escapes Namek, Namek explodes, Goku begins his training on planet Yardrat. Oh my god, that was, that was a whole paragraph and a half. Age 763. Krillin and Yamcha are revived and the Namekians leave planet Earth. Turtle celebrates his 1,000th birthday. The Makio star grows closer to Earth and Garlic Jr. uses it to escape the dead zone, but is resealed. Future Cell arrives in a time machine to the present where he begins the process of regrowing from his larval state. Frieza is surgically altered to continue his life as a cyborg. Age 764. Future Trunks comes to the present and defeats King Cold and Mecha Frieza. Goku finishes his training on Yardrat and returns to Earth. Trunks informs them of the threat of the androids. In an alternate timeline, Goku kills King Cold and Frieza with minimal difficulty. Vegeta and Bulma begin their affair. But most importantly, Goku and Piccolo attempt to get their driver's licenses. Age 766. Trunks is born in both main and alternate timelines. Future Pilaf and his squad wish for youth and become babies. Future Goku dies of the heart virus. Age 767. Cooler comes to Earth to avenge Frieza, but is sent into the sun instead, surviving by only coming into contact with the Big Getty Star. The 24th World Martial Arts Tournament takes place. Mr. Satan is the winner. Videl wins the Junior Tournament. Android 19 and 20, Gero, appear, and Goku is stricken with the heart virus, causing Vegeta to debut his Super Saiyan form and defeat Android 19. Gero awakens Android 16, 17, and 18, with 17 killing Gero. The Z fighters fail to defeat the androids. Kami and Piccolo fuse. Cell makes his debut. Present Cell is killed before he can become a threat. In the future timeline, all Z fighters are killed by Android 17 and 18, save Gohan. Present timeline has Android 13's events take place. Goku is cured of the heart virus. Vegeta and Trunks train in the hyperbolic time chamber and pioneer Super Saiyan grades 2 and 3. 
Piccolo fights Android 17, but their fight is interrupted by Imperfect Cell, who absorbs 17 and becomes Semi-Perfect Cell. Goku and Gohan enter the chamber, where Goku pioneers Super Saiyan Grade 4, and Gohan achieves Super Saiyan 2 for the first time unknowingly. Vegeta trounces Semi-Perfect Cell in Grade 2, but lets him absorb Android 18 to get stronger. Perfect Cell defeats Vegeta. Grade 3 Trunks faces Perfect Cell on equal terms, but can't defeat him due to the speed and stamina decreases of Grade 3. Piccolo enters the time chamber before Vegeta enters it again himself. Gohan turns 11 and saves a village from a greedy man who's trying to get people to pay to enter a useless bunker. Cell destroys the world military force. Dendi becomes the new Guardian. Goten is conceived at some point between now and the Cell games. The events of the Return of Cooler, Broly the Legendary Super Saiyan, plan to eradicate all Saiyans, and the real 4D ride take place. In said events, Goku goes to the new planet Namek and faces Metal Cooler and destroys the Big Getty Star. He then goes to new planet Vegeta to stop Z Broly, who's already began destroying the South Galaxy in hopes of stopping him from eradicating the universe. This requires a team effort to bring him down. Goku and the team face off against Hachiak and win and face off against a revived and empowered Frieza. The Cell games happen, and Goku is killed while Gohan achieves Super Saiyan 2. Perfect Cell is destroyed, and Future Trunks returns to his original timeline. Goku goes to Grand Kai's planet, and takes part in the Ano Yoichi Budokai, commemorating the death of King Kai, who died alongside all others on King Kai's planet when Goku brought the self-destructing Cell there. Bojack escapes his imprisonment and is killed by Gohan, and finally, Goten is born. Age 770, Krillin marries Android 18. Age 771, Marin is born. Age 773, the Supreme Kai and Kibito travel to Earth to look for Majin Buu. Age 774, Gohan enrolls in Orange Star High and becomes the Great Saiyaman. Videl discovers Gohan's identity. Gohan teaches Videl how to fly. Broly's second coming takes place, where Broly awakens on Earth, even more schizophrenic than before, and is defeated by Gohan, Goten, Trunks, and possibly Goku, who blasts him into the sun. The 25th World Martial Arts Tournament takes place. Goku returns to Earth for a single day to compete. Supreme Kai asks for the Z Fighters to help in stopping Babidi from releasing Majin Buu. Vegeta kills Pui Pui. Goku kills Yakan. Gohan battles Dabara, Vegeta is turned into an evil disciple of Babidi and battles Goku, but the match is stopped when they sense that Majin Buu has been released. Vegeta sacrifices his life trying to defeat Buu. Goku battles Buu as Super Saiyan 3, but retreats as he wants the fusion of Goten and Trunks to be the one who kills Buu. Buu kills Babidi. Goku returns to the afterlife, and Gohan mistakenly frees Old Kai from the Z-Sword. Old Kai begins the ceremony to unleash Gohan's sleeping power. Boo befriends Mr. Satan and a puppy named B. Boo's evil and good sides split, causing the creation of the more powerful Super Boo. Boo kills almost every single being on Earth. Gotenks battles Super Boo. Gotenks defuses, but Gohan arrives and thrashes Boo with his newly awakened powers. Piccolo and Gotenks are absorbed by Boo. Old Kai gives Goku his life, allowing him to return to Earth. Boo absorbs Gohan. Vegeta returns to Earth with the help of fortune teller Baba. Goku and Vegeta fuse into Vegito and effortlessly pick Buu apart. Vegeta rips the good Buu out of Super Buu, causing him to revert to his original form, Kid Buu. Kid Buu destroys the Earth. Goku and Vegeta battle Buu on the world of the Kais. Porunga restores the Earth. Vegeta's life is restored when all of the good people who died are wished back to life. Goku destroys Buu with the Super Spirit Bomb. Oob is born. Bio Broly takes place where Lord Jaguar clones Broly, but the creature is later defeated by Goten, Trunks, Krillin, and Android 18. Fusion Reborn takes place where Goku and Vegeta team up to form Gogeta against Janemba. Wrath of the Dragon takes place where Tapion is freed from his music box, Minosha is killed, and Hirutagarn is reborn on Earth. Goku kills Hirutagarn. Shenron then erases all but select people's memories of Majin Buu on Earth. Age 775. Dr. Mew employs Daltaki and gives him Lude. Daltaki creates a scam religion on planet Lude, the Lude Cult. By using Lude, Daltaki transforms the religious followers into dolls to gather energy for baby. Age 776. Son Goku and his friends return takes place and we meet Vegeta's brother, Tarbal. Age 778. Gohan and Videl get married. Beerus wakes up looking for a Super Saiyan God. Goku confronts Beerus and achieves Super Saiyan God with the help of his friends. Age 779, Pan is born. 
Frieza is revived and achieves his golden form, and Goku and Vegeta train with Whis to unlock Super Saiyan Blue. Frieza returns to Earth, but is killed by Goku and Vegeta. The Tournament of Destroyers takes place, in which Universe 7 is victorious. Universe 6's Earth is restored by the Super Dragon Balls. The 4G Ride takes place, in which Goku fuses with the audience of the ride to defeat the legendary Super Saiyan God, Broly. Future Trunks returns to the past, and the events of the Goku Black arc take place. Age 780. The Tournament of Power takes place, Frieza is revived, and Goku achieves Ultra Instinct for the first time. Bulla is born. The events of Dragon Ball Legends takes place. In the future timeline in this year, Trunks witnesses the death of future Gohan and becomes a Super Saiyan for the first time. Age 780 to 781. Moro breaks free from prison, and Buu awakens as the Grand Supreme Kai for a time to help in the battle. Mirus helps Goku protect his Ultra Instinct, and Oob indirectly helps defeat Moro. Age 781. Granola wishes to be the strongest in the universe, cutting his life short to three years. Goku and Vegeta are both training under Whis and Beerus respectively, and are both tricked by the heaters into going to Planet Serial to face off against Granola. Vegeta displays his Ultra Ego for the first time, and the Saiyans and Granola make peace. Goku remembers his true parents. Gas wishes to be the strongest in the universe, and cuts his life short to a few hours. Gas begins to decay, and Frieza displays his new Black Frieza form to defeat Gas easily. Age 781 to 782, Super Dragon Ball Heroes takes place. Age 782 to 783, Dragon Ball Super Superhero takes place, in which the Red Ribbon Army creates Gammas 1 and 2 with Dr. Hedo's help, and also creates Cell Max. Gammas 1 and 2 turn good, and Gamma 2 perishes to help defeat Cell Max. Gohan achieves his new Beast form, and Piccolo achieves his Orange form. Age 784. Goku meets Oob and leaves to train with him. In the future timeline, Trunks would return to age 764 to warn Goku of the androids and save his life with medicine for the heart virus. Age 785, Future Timeline. Trunks returns to defeat the androids and kills Imperfect Cell two years later before returning to the present to inform the Z-Fighters. Cell's alternate future timeline, Cell kills Trunks and then returns to the past to achieve his perfect form. Sometime before age 795, Future Trunks kills Babidi and Dabura before they can awaken Boo at age 795. Goku Black and Zamasu appear and begin laying waste to the world. Age 796. Trunks returns to the past to get help from Goku and Vegeta, who return to the future to defeat Black and Zamasu. But they fuse, and upon defeat, Zamasu becomes a part of the fabric of space-time, causing Zeno to erase the future universe. Whis brings the future timeline back by reversing time, and has Beerus seal Zamasu away before he can destroy anyone. <sighs> okay, Dragon Ball GT's events take place next. Age 789, Goku is returned to a child's form and goes on an explorative trip across the world with Trunks and Pan to gather the Dragon Balls. He defeats Don Ki and his mercenary Legic. He defeats Lord Lude and defeats Doltaki. He goes to Planet M2, meets Dr. Mew and Baby, who they try to kill before he wakes up, but they fail. Returning home to Earth, they find it taken over by Baby, and a fight against Baby-possessed Vegeta takes place in which Goku achieves Super Saiyan 4. Baby uses the Black Star Dragon Balls to create Planet Tuffle in Earth's orbit. The Earth would later explode because of the Black Star Dragon Balls. Piccolo allows himself to be killed in the explosion to stop the Black Star Dragon Balls from being used again. Age 790. The 30th World Martial Arts Tournament takes place. Mr. Satan is the winner, and Maju comes in second. In the Junior Division, Mugly comes in first, and Goku comes in second. In Hell, Dr. Mew and Dr. Garo team up to make Hell Fighter 17 and use him to open a hole to the living world. Goku travels to Hell to face them, but is left there trapped. Piccolo and Dendi open a hole to allow Goku back into the living world. Android 17 and Hell Fighter 17 fuse into Super 17. Goku Super Saiyan 4 decides to face off against Super 17, but is defeated. Android 18 helps Goku to kill Super 17 with the Dragon Fist technique. The Shadow Dragons are born after a wish gone wrong. Goku and Pan defeat most all Shadow Dragons, save Nova Shenron, who is killed by Sin Shenron after he turns good. Sin Shenron then absorbs the Dragon Balls and becomes Omega Shenron, who is only killed after Goku uses the biggest spirit bomb he's ever used, the Universal Spirit Bomb. Goku is then transported somewhere by Shenron after Shenron is restored. The Dragon Balls then disappear from the face of the Earth for the time being, and Goku is presumed to have died. Age 859, Bulma Lei is born. Age 880, Goku Jr. and Vegeta Jr. are born. Age 889, 
Goku Jr. is bullied and Pan has a heart attack. Goku Jr. goes on a journey to save her by finding the four-star Dragon Ball. This takes him and his bully-turned-friend Puck to Mount Paozu, where they face many trials that forces Goku Jr. to awaken Super Saiyan. Goku Jr. finds out that getting just one Dragon Ball isn't enough and laments this. However, the spirit of his ancestor, Goku, appears to console him and tells him how proud he is. Pan turns out to have survived without the Dragon Ball's wish, as well as Puck, who had fallen off a cliff earlier. Later on, Goku Jr. and Vegeta Jr. face off in the World Martial Arts Tournament, where they both display their Super Saiyan transformations. Excellent! You made it through Dragon Ball 101. Next up, some facts. 107 of them, in fact. Although this is just the beginning. We love our 107 facts videos here at Channel Frederator, so we've put together a handful specifically about different iterations of Dragon Ball. Now, here's 107 Dragon Ball Z facts you should know. It's been seven years, but it still holds up. Let's get started! Number one, Dragon Ball Z is the sequel to Dragon Ball. Both were created by Akira Toriyama, a manga artist who gained mainstream recognition through his manga Dr. Slump prior to the creation of Dragon Ball. Number 2. Akira Toriyama has also served as a character designer for popular video games including the Dragon Quest series and Chrono Trigger. Number 3. Prior to becoming a manga artist, Akira Toriyama worked at an advertising agency designing posters. After three years, he quit his job and entered an amateur manga contest for Jump Magazine, but lost. Number 4. A line in the Funimation dub of Dragon Ball Z states that Vegeta wears a size 9 boot. Number 5. Kazuhiko Torishima has said that Dragon Ball, quote, should have wrapped up with the Frieza saga. Number 6. Torishima's disappointment in having Androids 19 and 20 as villains spurred Toriyama to create Androids 17 and 18. Number 7. But Torishima also disliked Android 17 and 18, which led to the creation of Cell. Number 8. Following the creation of Cell, Toriyama's actual editor at the time, Kondo, complained about the character's insectoid appearance. He felt that it was too ugly, so Toriyama had Cell transform into a semi-perfect form, but Kondo disliked that design too. He said the villain, quote, looked like a moron, which is why Cell ended up undergoing his final transformation into perfect Cell. Number 9. Before all the revisions to the Android saga, Android 19 and Android 20 were set to play the roles that future Android 17 and future Android 18 ended up with. 19 and 20 would have been the culprits behind the massacre of future Trunks world. Number 10. Dragon Ball Z adapts the last 325 chapters of the Dragon Ball manga series, which is the second best-selling manga of all time. It has sold more than 230 million copies worldwide. Number 11. Dragon Ball Z first aired in Japan on Fuji TV on April 25th, 1989. It completed its run on January 31st, 1996. Number 12. Dragon Ball Z was produced by animation studio Toei Animation. The studio has also worked on other hit series, including One Piece, Sailor Moon, and Digimon. Number 13. Akira Toriyama chose the title Dragon Ball Z because Z is the last letter of the alphabet. Toriyama was running out of ideas for Dragon Ball and wanted the series to end. Number 14. The Dragon Ball Z anime includes original, or some would say filler, material such as new attacks and characters that weren't present in the manga. This is because Akira Toriyama was still writing the manga while the anime was being produced. Number 15. The original Japanese voices of Dragon Ball Z differ greatly from their English dub counterparts. For one thing, Goku is voiced by a female actress named Masako Nozawa and has a much higher pitched voice than what dub viewers might be used to. Number 16. In addition to Goku, Masako Nozawa also voices Gohan and Goten, like father, like son, and other son. Fact number 17. Dragon Ball Kai is a remastered version of Dragon Ball Z broadcast as part of the series' 20th anniversary celebrations. It premiered on April 5th, 2009. Number 18. When it originally aired in North America, Dragon Ball Z was subject to heavy censorship. Content was heavily altered or removed, including character names, clothing, scenes, and dialogue. One example would be the character Hercule. His original name was Mr. Satan. Number 19. Akira Toriyama's influences include Osamu Tezuka's Astro Boy and the early films of Jackie Chan. Watching the anime adaptation of Dragon Ball also influenced his work and method of coloring. Number 20. Artists influenced by Akira Toriyama and Dragon Ball include Eiichiro Oda, the creator of One Piece, Masashi Kishimoto, the creator of Naruto, Hiro Mashima, the creator of Fairy Tail and Rave, Tite Kube, the creator of Bleach, Kentaro Yabuki, the creator of Black Cat, and Jeff Franklin, the creator of Full House. Okay, the last one's not true, but could you imagine? <laughs> Number 21. Toriyama has said of Dragon Ball's success, quote, Frankly, I don't quite understand why it happened. While the manga was being serialized, the only thing I wanted as I kept drawing was to make Japanese boys happy. Fact 22. 
At its start, Dragon Ball was loosely based on the classic Chinese novel Journey to the West. Goku was based on Sun Wukong, and Bulma was based on Xuanzang. Fact number 23. When working on Dragon Ball, Toriyama didn't plan the series out in advance. He would just draw and write it as he went along. At times, he would forget things he had previously established. This would force him into tough situations he would have to write himself out of. Number 24. The character launch largely disappears from Dragon Ball Z following the Vegeta saga. Akira Toriyama has admitted that her absence stems from the simple fact that he forgot she existed. Number 25. Goku's house is located at 58N018. In simpler terms, his address is 439 East District. For some reason, I cannot find it on Google Maps. Number 26, Android 17's actual name is Lapis, and Android 18's name is Lazuli. With their powers combined, they form Captain Planet. Actually, they just form Lapis Lazuli, which is a rock. Number 27, the battle between Goku and Frieza took around four hours of total screen time. Supposedly, it's currently the longest anime fight of all time. Number 28. Prior to the Saiyans taking over, Planet Vegeta was called Planet Plant. Number 29. If you add up the number of battles in Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball, you'll find that there have been a total of 187 fights. Number 30. Bulma's ID number is SSC41453. Number 31. Between Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, Bulma has had 17 different hairstyles. Number 32, Akira Toriyama said at one point that Piccolo was his favorite character. According to him, quote, It really is cliche when bad guys turn into good guys, but it just feels great drawing it. Number 33, it's a well-known fact among fans that Goku's father is Bardock, but his mother's identity is a bit lesser known. She was a Saiyan named Gina and had a gentle nature, which was something uncommon among her kind. Number 34, the Yu-Gi-Oh card Tyler the Great Warrior was actually modeled after future Trunks. Number 35, Namekians develop much faster than humans or Saiyans. By the time he was three, Piccolo was a full-grown adult, and he's actually only four years older than Gohan. Number 36, Vegeta may be Prince of the Saiyans and one of the universe's strongest warriors, but even he isn't immune to fear. He's scared of worms. Number 37. Goku is afraid of needles and hospital food. Number 38. Goten was originally brought into the series to replace Goku as the main character, but fans disapproved so much that the plan was scrapped. Number 39. By the time Dragon Ball Z ends, Master Roshi is 354 years old. The manga explains that Roshi once consumed an immortality elixir. Number 40. Trunks' favorite food is yakiniku, which translates to grilled meat. Number 41. One of Goten's favorite foods is Paki. Number 42. If you're a Naruto fan, you may have spotted Chiaotzu in chapter 150 of the manga. As Naruto wanders around the festival, Chiaotzu's face makes a cameo as one of the many masks on display. Number 43. For all of the times he's entered, Goku has actually only won the World Martial Arts Tournament once. Number 44. Yamcha is severely injured, killed, or already dead in every saga of Dragon Ball Z. Hi guys, you're watching Tuned Ups 107 on Cartoon Hangover. This Thursday, we'll be covering 107 Nightmare Before Christmas facts, and next Tuesday for 107 facts on Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Now let's get back to Dragon Ball Z. Number 45. Yamcha also loses in the quarterfinals of every World Martial Arts Tournament. He just can't catch a break. Number 46, Bibbidi Bobbidi and Boo's names were taken, of course, from the famous Cinderella incantation. Number 47, James Wong, the director of the, uh, awful, 2009 live action film adaptation of Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Evolution, said that he had never seen a single episode or read any of the series until he was involved with the film. Clearly, this made him the best choice to direct a movie for it, then. Number 48. Frieza is in charge of the Galactic Trade Organization, which conquers planets and then auctions them off at high prices. Toriyama based him off of real estate speculators, who he considers to be, quote, the worst kind of people. Number 49. Broly was born with a power level of 10,000. It took Goku a ton of training to get those kinds of numbers. Number 50. Excluding movies and specials, Goku has only been killed by two villains in Dragon Ball Z. They were Yakon and Kid Buu. Number 51. His pacifist son Gohan, on the other hand, has killed a total of 15 enemies over the course of the series and its film. In the manga, this number is cut down to 8. 7 Cell Juniors, and then the Big Cell himself. Number 52. It's over 9,000! Is one of the most famous lines from Dragon Ball Z, but it actually contains a dubbing error. In the original Japanese, it was actually over 8,000, but it doesn't have that same kind of charm. Number 53. In order to obtain Planet Plant, the Saiyans had to battle the Tuffles. 
The war between them is known as the Saiyan Tuffle War and lasted 10 years. Number 54, technically Vegeta isn't the prince of all Saiyans. He's the king because his father was killed by Frieza. But more importantly, this makes Bulma a queen, right? Cause she's totally a queen. Number 55, Frieza owns somewhere around 79 planets, but his older brother Cooler owns over three times as many with around 259 planets to his name. Number 56, Goku has taken a bite out of every lead villain except for Cell. Number 57, King Kai's pet monkey Bubbles is a reference to Michael Jackson's pet monkey of the same name. Does that make King Kai Michael Jackson? Number 58, there are over 25 variations of the Kamehameha. Number 59, Majin Buu is over 5 million years old, but that doesn't keep him from acting like a big baby. Number 60, but Majin Buu is nowhere near the age of old Kai, who is around 15 million years old during the Majin Buu saga. There's probably a reason why he literally has old in his name. Number 61, Goku's identity as a Saiyan was originally going to be revealed during the Piccolo Jr. saga, but Toriyama decided he should delay it until Raditz arrived. Number 62, after fusing with Kami, Piccolo was temporarily the strongest Z fighter. He even surpassed the Super Saiyan powers of Goku, Vegeta, and future Trunks. Number 63, the Dragon Ball Z special, Dragon Ball Z Bardock, the father of Goku, reveals that Nappa used to have hair. Should I use that, Rogaine? Number 64, Vegeta's always calling Goku by a Saiyan name, Kakarot, but he has used the name Goku on a total of eight occasions. Number 65, Piccolo and Cell are the only two characters in the Dragon Ball universe to have killed Goku. Number 66, Dragon Ball Z debuted on Toonami in September of 1998. Number 67, there are three types of androids in the series, cyborg, total artificial construct types, and biomechanical. Number 68, in the manga, the character Pui Pui is named Pocus, yet another Cinderella reference. Number 69, Goten managed his first Super Saiyan transformation at the age of 7, granting him the title of youngest Super Saiyan. Number 70, Vegeta was born in age 732. Number 71, Goku was born in age 737, which makes him 5 years younger than Vegeta. Number 72, Gohan was born in May of age 757. Number 73, after Goku's battle with Vegeta, he ends up in Wukong Hospital. Wukong is the Chinese name of the Journey to the West character that Goku is based on. Number 74, from the day they're born, pure-blooded Saiyan's hairstyles never change. Number 75, at 7 foot 4, Piccolo is the tallest sea fighter by far. Number 76, if you add up how many times the spirit bomb has been used in all Dragon Ball related series films and specials, you'll get 8. Number 77, the second battle between Goku and Vegeta takes place exactly 200 episodes after the first. Number 78, Guldo, the Ginyu First Mercenary Squadron member, is of the alien race Bastions. Number 79, Goku and his friends starred in a special titled Goku's Firefighting Regiment. It was used to teach fire safety to kids in Japan. Number 80, Tien has fought against every major Dragon Ball Z villain besides Frieza, and the only reason he couldn't fight against Frieza was because he was dead at the time. Number 81, the six dots on Krillin's forehead are actually incense burns from when he was a monk at Orin Temple. Number 82, Goku was killed off during the Cell Games in an attempt to start shifting the focus of the series onto Gohan. Clearly this idea didn't last long. Number 83, the Garlic Jr. Saga, which sounds like a great fast food restaurant, never takes place in the manga and is entirely a filler arc for the anime. Number 84, but don't write off Garlic Jr. just because he's filler. He's the only villain to have succeeded in wishing for immortality with the Dragon Balls. Number 85, over the span of all series, films, and specials, Frieza has been defeated five times. This makes him the villain with the most losses in the series. Number 86, Snoop Dogg, or rather Snoop Lion, has revealed on Reddit that he is a fan of the character Gogeta, the fusion of Vegeta and Goku. He said, quote, Gogeta is a G. Number 87, in the Dragon Ball universe, Earth has been destroyed twice within a 15 year span of time, once by Majin Buu in Dragon Ball Z and once by the Black Star Dragon Balls in Dragon Ball GT. Number 88, we're only really familiar with Beerus, but there are a total of 12 gods of destruction, one for each universe. Number 89, the final episode of Dragon Ball Z to premiere on Toonami aired on April 7th, 2003. It's been over 12 years. Number 90, the force of planet Vegeta's gravity is 10 times that of Earth's. Number 91, music by the American rock band Disturbed has been featured in the dub versions of two Dragon Ball Z films, Dragon Ball Z Lord Slug and Dragon Ball Z Cooler's Revenge. Number 92, the music from the North American version of Dragon Ball Z differs from that of the original Japanese version and was composed by Bruce Falconer. Number 93, Bruce Falconer has said that Future Trunks is his favorite Dragon Ball Z character. Number 94, Goku is completely pure of heart, which is why he can't be harmed by the Devil Might Beam and why he can control the Spirit Bomb. Number 95, Master Roshi's immortal phoenix died from food poisoning after eating some bad bird seed. Number 96, Chi Chi was renamed for the Latin American dub because Chi Chi means breast in Spanish. 
finish. Number 97. In the manga, Chi Chi originally had blue hair and Bulma had purple hair. Number 98. Akira Toriyama created a prototype for Dragon Ball that was titled Dragon Boy. Number 99. Masako Nozawa has been voicing Goku since 1986. That means she's had the job for almost 30 years now. Number 100. In the Funimation dub of the series, voice actor Chris Sabat plays Vegeta, Piccolo, and Yamcha. Number 101. The God of Destruction Beerus was originally going to be called Virus and would have been responsible for turning the Saiyan race evil in the first place. Number 102. Another initial plan for Beerus was to have him turn Goku's friends against him, forcing the Saiyan into thinking about what really makes a hero. But Toriyama found the plot too dark and reworked it into a more lighthearted story, which is why Goku still doesn't know what makes a hero, I guess. Number 103. Tien was going to appear in the 2008 Dragon Ball special, Yo! Son Goku and his friends return? Double exclamation point question mark, but his voice actor Hiro Taka Suzuoki passed away, so the character was removed out of respect. Number 104. Beerus's name was derived from one Japanese pronunciation of the word virus, Birusu, but Akira Toriyama mistakenly thought that it was derived from the word beer, so he decided to name Beerus's attendant Whis, taken from the word whiskey to match. Number 105. Namek is taken from the Japanese word Namekuji, which means slugs. Number 106. Saiyan comes from rearranging the syllables of the Japanese word yasai, which means vegetables. Number 107. You may be wondering how Vegito's name is a combination of Goku and Vegeta. It's actually Vegeta combined with the Japanese form of Goku's Saiyan name, Kakaroto. Next up is a more recent video. 107 Dragon Ball Z facts you should know, this time from earlier this year. Number 1. Dragon Ball Z was created by famed mangaka and character designer Akira Toriyama. Number 2. Dragon Ball Z wasn't Toriyama's first creation. He had a couple other popular series before he hit it big. One was Dr. Slump, the story of a genius inventor in a rural Japanese town who created a supernaturally strong robot named Arale. And of course, Dragon Ball came before Dragon Ball Z. Number 3. Toriyama was influenced greatly by Osamu Tezuka's Astro Boy and the early films of Jackie Chan. Chan's influence is particularly evident in the martial arts and slapstick sequences. Number 4. Dragon Ball Z first aired in Japan on Fuji TV on April 25, 1989. The series ran until January 31, 1996, producing a total of 291 episodes. Number 5. Akira Toriyama worked at an advertising agency designing posters before becoming a manga artist. This experience in design and illustration likely contributed to his unique art style and storytelling in his manga series. Number 6. Toriyama didn't pull the idea for Dragon Ball from thin air either. The whole Dragon Ball series takes significant inspiration from a classic Chinese novel, Journey to the West. Number 7. Journey to the West chronicles the pilgrimage of the Tang Dynasty Buddhist monk Xuanzang, who traveled far and wide, overcoming trials and tribulations in order to obtain legendary Buddhist texts. Number 8. The character of Goku borrows heavily from the Monkey King in Journey to the West. This influence is evident in Goku's playful characteristics, monkey tail, and his weapon of choice. Number 9. Goku's power pole can change its shape and size to meet Goku's needs which is very similar to the staff wielded by the Monkey King. Number 10. Goku's band of companions also have parallels in Journey to the West. Krillin can be compared to the Monk, and Oolong can be compared to the anthropomorphic pig. Number 11. Of course, despite its origins in Journey to the West, Dragon Ball eventually found its own identity, developing plot lines and characters in a unique and dynamic way. This ended up leading to Dragon Ball Z, with Goku all grown up and married, taking on new and increasingly dangerous foes. Number 12. Somehow, Goku only actually killed two foes throughout the entire Dragon Ball Z series. He's got some mercy in those Saiyan bones, and he also just wants to keep fighting stronger opponents. Number 13. The first opponent to die at Goku's hands was Yakon, one of Babidi's minions, trying to free Majin Buu. Goku managed to defeat him by overloading him with light energy, causing Yakon to explode. Poor guy shouldn't have tried to eat so much. Number 14. The other opponent Goku killed in Dragon Ball Z was Kid Buu. After a long and intense battle, Goku finally dispatched him by using his spirit bomb. 
Number 15. On the topic of deaths, Goku himself has only died twice in the series. Number 16. However, Goku technically could have been considered dead up to eight times throughout the canon timeline. This, of course, all depends on how you look at it. Number 17. Goku's first death occurred during a battle against Raditz, where Goku and Piccolo joined forces to fend off the brutal Saiyan. In a daring and self-sacrificial plan, Goku distracted Raditz while Piccolo blasted him with a beam cannon, killing both Raditz and Goku in the process. Number 18. His second death occurred during the Cell Saga, when Goku sacrificed himself to prevent Cell from killing everyone via self-destruction. Goku used instant transmission to teleport himself and Cell to King Kai's planet where Goku was caught in the explosion. Number 19. In both instances of his death, Goku demonstrated his selfless nature, willing to sacrifice his life for the sake of his friends and the world. Number 20. You may have noticed some funny names in Dragon Ball Z and you are not alone. Many characters in the series have pun-inspired names, often referring to food, a trademark of Akira Toriyama's humor. Number 21. For example, all of the pure-blooded Saiyan characters are named after vegetables. Vegeta's name is an offshoot of vegetable, Raditz's name is derived from radish, and Goku's Saiyan name Kakarot is a play on carrot. Number 22. In keeping with the pun trend, Frieza's name sounds like Freezer and his family members have similarly chilly names, including his brother Cooler and their father King Cold. Number 23. Frieza is in charge of the Galactic Trade Organization, which conquers planets and auctions them off at high prices. Toriyama based him off of real estate speculators, whom he considers to be the worst kind of people. Number 24. Moving on to the Briefs family, Bulma's family has a running theme of underwear-related names. Talk about a family secret out in the open. Hopefully they're not airing too much dirty laundry, if you know what I'm saying. Number 25. Vegeta, one of the most powerful and well-loved characters in Dragon Ball, was originally meant to be a one-off villain. His character arc was supposed to be over and done with after his initial defeat. Number 26. However, fan demand led to his character being retained and developed further. As you'll see, this set a bit of a precedent of the fans getting what they want. The introduction of his wife Bulma and son Trunks showed a softer side to the formerly ruthless Saiyan Prince. Number 27. A line in the Funimation dub of Dragon Ball Z states that Vegeta wears a size 9 boot. Now who here has the same boot size as Vegeta? Congrats on your new fun fact. Number 28. Dragon Ball Z's influence isn't just limited to its fandom. It also had an impact on the world of video games. The series heavily inspired the popular game franchise Sonic the Hedgehog. Number 29. From the iconic spiky blonde hair and color transformations to plot similarities, Sonic the Hedgehog shares a lot with Dragon Ball Z. For example, Sonic and his team's hunt for the seven Chaos Emeralds mirrors Goku and his crew's search for the seven Dragon Balls. Number 30. Other pop culture influences are abundant in the storytelling of Dragon Ball Z as well. The plot of the Android Saga bears a striking resemblance to that of the Terminator franchise. I wonder if future Trunks ever said, I'll be back. Or is that just up to the androids to say? Number 31. The Android Saga begins with a time traveler from a dystopian future warning about machines threatening to wipe out humanity unless the future is averted. Huh. Would James Cameron have anything to say about that? Number 32. Voice actors for Dragon Ball Z have quite the tough job, especially during the long, drawn-out roars of power that are a signature element of the series. Voice actor Sean Schemmel, who voices Goku, has revealed that he's actually fainted from the exertion of screaming on several occasions. Number 33. The first battle between Goku and Frieza is the longest in anime history. There's close to four hours of screen time dedicated to this particular bout, and it took over 19 episodes to wrap up. Number 34. This battle, especially the five-minute warning given by Frieza, has received a fair deal of criticism and has been said to exemplify Dragon Ball Z's use of lengthy and loaded filler content. Number 35. Next time on 107 Facts, narrator Keegan will continue to regale the Frederator audience with facts about this legendary series. Goku will power up for an extended amount of time and maybe we'll wrap this list up. Number 36. Dragon Ball Z adapts the last 325 chapters of the Dragon Ball manga series. Number 37. Dragon Ball Z Kai was created to adhere more closely to Akira Toriyama's original manga. By removing filler segments, the series was condensed to 167 episodes from the original Dragon Ball Z's 291. Number 38. Despite the prevalence of Saiyan characters in the series, there are no female Super Saiyans in Dragon Ball Z. 
This wasn't due to sexism on the part of Akira Toriyama, but due to his uncertainty about how a female Super Saiyan would look. Number 39. Akira Toriyama intended for Gohan, Goku's son, to replace Goku as the lead character of the series. Again, due to fan backlash, this plan was never executed. Goku remained the franchise's centerpiece character for years to come. Number 40. Master Roshi, Goku's first mentor, is over 350 years old and can't die of old age. His longevity is attributed to an immortal phoenix that supposedly gave him eternal life. There also may be a connection between eternal life and being a huge perv, but I can't quite confirm that. Number 41. The Android Twins, known as Android 17 and Android 18, are notorious characters who were created by Dr. Jiro to defeat Goku. Despite being known famously by their numerals, the twins do have real names. Lapis and Lazuli. Number 42. Goku and Gohan have a shared trait that may surprise you. They're both voiced by the same woman in the original Japanese version of the show. Masako Nozawa, a renowned Japanese actress, lends her voice to the iconic Saiyan father-son duo. Number 43. Akira Toriyama has stated that his favorite character is the green and purple Namekian warrior Piccolo. He expressed that he enjoyed drawing Piccolo's journey from a villain to a hero, and I'm sure his ears are fun to draw too. Number 44. Coming back to kill counts, Goku's son Gohan has a significant one, taking down a total of 15 characters. Among those defeated include members of the Spice Gang and Seven Cell Juniors. His most memorable victory is arguably his battle with Perfect Cell. Number 45. He is a little less bloodthirsty in the manga though. Gohan only ended up killing 8 enemies on the printed page. Number 46. Dragon Ball Z was actually intended to be the end of the series. That's why the letter Z was added at the end of the title, as Akira Toriyama thought it signified a conclusion. Fortunately for fans, this was far from the end. The series continued with Dragon Ball GT and Dragon Ball Super. Number 47. Dr. Jiro's creation, Cell, went through its transformations rather quickly, and there's an interesting reason for this. The series editor was dissatisfied with the early appearances of Cell, going as far as to label semi-perfect Cell as a moron. In response to his pleas, Akira Toriyama decided to speed up Cell's transformation process. Number 48. Cell's life cycle is surprisingly long. His incubation period in a tank lasts for 24 years, while his larval state takes 4 years to absorb enough nutrients to reach his first stage. This means the cell that Gohan ultimately kills is only 28 years old. Number 49. One of the most oft-forgotten characters of the series is Launch, a woman with a violent split personality and a penchant for submachine guns. She up and disappeared for over 150 episodes with no explanation. This wasn't a planned omission, Toriyama simply forgot about her existence in the series. When questioned about this, he admitted to the oversight. I guess it's hard to remember a mostly average human in a world full of intergalactic super beings. Number 50. A running joke among Dragon Ball Z fans is how frequently Krillin dies and gets resurrected. Yet what's even more surprising is that the entire population of Earth in the series has died more times than Krillin. A total of four times due to the acts of characters like Kid Buu, Frieza, Future Zeno, and the side effects of the Black Star Dragon Balls. I don't personally recall ever being annihilated, but if it happened and I'm back now, who am I to complain? Number 51. In the realm of hypothetical battles, Goku has triumphed over Superman. This occurred in an issue of Wizard Magazine where they were pitted against each other. Even in the YouTube series Epic Rap Battles of History, Goku was portrayed as the clear winner in a rap duel against Superman. What is it that the kids are saying these days? Goku solos? Number 52. Despite their mentor-student relationship dynamic, Piccolo is only four years older than Gohan. This is due to the fast growth and aging rate of Namekians. Piccolo was almost fully grown at the age of three. Number 53. Dragon Ball Z isn't just popular amongst fans, it also scores well critically. As of July 2015, it was ranked number 35 on IMDb's highest rated TV series with at least 6,000 votes, boasting an impressive score of 8.9 out of 10. Number 54. In total, there are 187 fights from the start of Dragon Ball to the end of Dragon Ball Z. That's a lot of fighting. Number 55. Dragon Ball Z has its share of hidden Easter eggs. For example, the hospital where Goku is treated right after his fight with Vegeta is named Wukong Hospital, which is Goku's Chinese name, and another reference to the Monkey King, Sun Wukong. Number 56. 
Despite being one of the most fearsome creatures in the galaxy, Frieza holds the record for being the most defeated character in Dragon Ball Z. Frieza has been taken down a staggering five times throughout the series. This is probably due to him refusing to ever stay down and coming back to get beat down again. Number 57. There was a brief period during the Android Saga when Piccolo became the most powerful character. After fusing with Kami, he became more powerful than all the Super Saiyans at their current levels. Number 58. Namekians like Piccolo do not possess genders. This is due to their unique method of reproduction, which is asexual and involves the production of eggs that are expelled from their mouths. Ew. Number 59. Fun fact. Standing at 7 foot 4, Piccolo is the tallest Z fighter. Number 60. The six marks on Krillin's forehead are not random. They're actually incense burns from his training to be a monk at Orin Temple. These burn marks were common among Buddhist monks in China before they were replaced by less conspicuous tattoos. Number 61. Master Roshi spent 50 years mastering the Kamehameha Wave. This doesn't seem as bad when you consider his apparent immortality. Number 62. Goku, however, being the prodigy that he is, managed to perfect the Kamehameha on his first try. Protagonist privilege. Number 63. Speaking of the Kamehameha, this move is a demonstration of a person's mastery of chi. Number 64. Over the course of the series, Goku has used his Kamehameha an astonishing 97 times. Number 65. The Kamehameha, which can be roughly translated as Turtle Shockwave, is a term that mashes Hawaiian and Japanese language elements together. The translation is challenging, with fans generally interpreting it as Turtle Destruction Wave or Turtle Shockwave. Number 66. Cooler, Frieza's older brother and the main antagonist in movies 5 and 6, controls a vast territory, comprising approximately 256 planets, over three times the number ruled by Frieza. Number 67. The famous, It's over 9,000 line was born out of a dubbing mistake. The original line was, It's over 8,000, but was misquoted in the Ocean dub. Due to the meme's popularity, subsequent Funimation dubs embraced the 9,000 reference. Is 9,000 more funny than 8,000? The math says yes. Number 68. Though Vegeta is often referred to as Prince Vegeta, he technically holds the title of King of All Saiyans following his father's death at the hands of Frieza. It's likely that he continues using the title of Prince as a mark of respect for his late father. Number 69. There are notable differences in the character development of Trunks in the manga and anime. In the manga, Trunks transforms into a Super Saiyan before Gohan's death, whereas in the TV special, it's Gohan's death that triggers Trunks' transformation. Number 70. Broly, also known as the legendary Super Saiyan, was an exceptionally powerful character right from birth, with a power level of 10,000, a level typically reached only by elite Saiyan warriors in their prime. Number 71. It's rare for Vegeta to refer to Goku by his Earth name. He typically uses Goku's Saiyan birth name Kakarot, and has only called him Goku eight times throughout the series. Number 72. Unbeknownst to many, there exists a lost Dragon Ball Z movie, roughly translated to Dragon Ball side story planned to eradicate the Saiyans. The film, which never reached American shores, centers around the Z Fighters' struggle against a scientist from a race annihilated by the Saiyans. There's a video game based on the tale too, but it, like the movie it's based upon, never made it to America. Number 73. In the original manga, both Chi Chi and Bulma sported different hair colors. Chi Chi was originally drawn with blue hair, while Bulma's hair was a striking purple. Number 74. Bulma's hairstyle undergoes significant changes all throughout Dragon Ball Z. In fact, she alters her hairdo an impressive 17 times, while her husband Vegeta never alters his hair. I think he's due for one makeover. Number 75. By the end of Dragon Ball Z, Mr. Satan stands as the only character who hasn't faced death. Number 76. Yamcha's luck seems perpetually sour in Dragon Ball Z. He's either severely injured, killed, or is already dead in every saga of the series. Number 77. King Kai's pet monkey is named Bubbles, referencing the real-life pet monkey of pop icon Michael Jackson. Number 78. There's a Cinderella reference in Dragon Ball Z. The sorcerer who created Boo, a recurring antagonist in the series, was named Bibbidi. His son, also a sorcerer, was named Babidi. Bibbidi, Babidi, Boo. Number 79. 
Dragon Ball was heavily censored when it first aired in North America. This included changes to character names, clothing, scenes, and dialogue to make it more suitable for a younger audience. Mr. Satan even had his name changed to Hercule. Number 80. To synchronize with the pace of the manga source material, Toei Animation created several filler sagas. These include the fake Planet Namek arc, the Garlic Jr. saga, and the Afterlife Tournament. Number 81. Senzu beans, mythical legumes cultivated by Korin, provide significant help to the heroes throughout the series. Each bean can completely rejuvenate the consumer's body, healing any injuries or ailments. Throughout Dragon Ball Z, a total of 28 Senzu beans are consumed. Number 82. Goku has the unique distinction of appearing in every form of Dragon Ball, from the original Dragon Ball through Dragon Ball Z to Dragon Ball GT, and in every movie, OVA, and TV special. Number 83. The Japanese government actually provided funding for a Dragon Ball Z movie that was released in 2013. The film, Dragon Ball Z Battle of the Gods, received a grant of 50 million yen approximately $600,000, covering about a tenth of the production costs. Number 84. The distinctive Super Saiyan form was actually born out of practicality. The transformation didn't require Toriyama or his assistants to color in Goku's black hair with ink, thereby saving time while still giving the character an imposing and memorable appearance. Number 85. Dragon Ball Z's animation can swing pretty wide between excellent and... eh... Different animators are used for different episodes, resulting in episodes sometimes looking highly detailed one week and choppy and blocky the next. Number 86. Other factors impact the show as well, such as budget constraints and staffing concerns. So next time you see a wild change of quality, consider why that happened. Number 87. Akira Toriyama once confused the Super Saiyan 3 transformation with the second form, Super Saiyan 2, and if a fan did that, they'd be launched into the sun by other hardcore DBZ lovers. Number 88. The wish-granting dragon, Shenlong, also known as Shenron, shares a namesake with a famous actor. His name is derived from Jackie Chan's nickname, Sing Lung. Number 89. Saiyans don't seem to need barbers. Unlike humans, Saiyan's hair stays pretty much exactly the same throughout each individual's lifetime. Number 90. Goku's home address is 439 East District. Send him some fan mail if you get the chance, just don't hope for a reply. Number 91. Majin Buu has been around for an astonishing 5 million years. Number 92. The homeworld of the Saiyans, Planet Vegeta, originally had a different name, Planet Plant. Number 93. Bardock, Goku's father, was cursed with the ability to see the future. In his dying moments, he has a vision of Goku battling Frieza. Number 94. Not many fans know about Goku's mother, Jine. While Goku's father, Bardock, has a more prominent role in the series, Jine is a relatively lesser known character. Number 95. Goku has some surprisingly mundane fears. He is notably afraid of needles and dislikes hospital food. Number 96. When Android 18 married Krillin, Android 17 technically became Krillin's brother-in-law, and Dr. Jiro his father-in-law. Holidays must be awkward. Number 97. Goku and his wife Chi-Chi lead a relatively humble life when not fighting to save the world. They live off the money that Goku won in various martial arts tournaments. It's not like he's gonna go out and get a day job. Number 98. Much to Chi-Chi's chagrin, Goku has only won the World Martial Arts Tournament once. Number 99. The moon in Dragon Ball Z was obliterated twice. Once by Kame Senin, Master Roshi, and another time by Piccolo. Both characters destroyed the moon to prevent Saiyans from transforming into their powerful great ape form. Number 100. One of Goku's unique weaknesses is his insatiable appetite. Goku needs to constantly eat or he becomes significantly weaker and more susceptible to pain and damage. Number 101. In an alternate and much darker Dragon Ball Z timeline, the villain Perfect Cell ends up killing Future Trunks after he returns to his own time. With Future Trunks being the last Saiyan, his death marks the official extinction of the Saiyan race. Number 102. Nappa, one of the Saiyan villains from early in Dragon Ball Z, wasn't always bald. He used to have hair. I guess the same could be said about most bald men. Number 103. Super Saiyan 4 Goku defeats only one main villain, Baby. Other main antagonists like Super 17 and Omega Shenron were defeated by Goku in his child form. Kind of embarrassing for them, don't you think? Number 104. Bulma's official ID number, as per police records in the series, is SSC41453. Number 105. The origin of Goku's heart disease traces back to his time on Planet Yardrat. It's suggested that he contracted the disease during his stay there. Number 106. 
The Yu-Gi-Oh card, Tyler the Great Warrior, was modeled after Future Trunks. This is a unique crossover between two popular anime franchises. The card was created for a fan named Tyler who was diagnosed with a rare form of liver cancer, and the Make-A-Wish Foundation made his wish come true. Number 107. Old Kai is around 15 million years old during the Majin Buu saga. Can you name someone older than Old Kai? Let us know down in the comments. Of course, we gotta get people up to date on the newer versions of Dragon Ball as well. Dragon Ball Super revitalized the series and got a whole bunch of new fans interested in the Saiyan. 107 facts didn't quite seem like enough, so we did two episodes focusing on Super. Here's 107 Dragon Ball Super Facts You Should Know, Parts 1 and 2. Number 1. Episode 1 of Dragon Ball Super started 18 years after the last episode of Dragon Ball Z. Talk about some downtime. Number 2. The writer of Dragon Ball Super is manga and game creator Akira Toriyama, who started his career with the successful manga Dr. Slump. He also created the game Chrono Trigger, so yes, he's super talented. Talented, super, you know what I mean? <laughs> okay, and now with these puns. Number three, Toriyama is credited with creating one of the most successful manga in the world, Dragon Ball. As of 2016, the manga sold more than 230 million copies worldwide. Number four, Toriyama loved watching animation growing up and was inspired by Disney's 101 Dalmatians and by Astro Boy to start creating his own. Number five, the film's Dragon Ball Z movie 14, Kami to Kami, and Dragon Ball Z Movie 15, Fukatsu no F, are adapted into the first 27 episodes of Dragon Ball Super. So if you're a huge fan, you might see some of the things that you recognize. Number 6. The North American English dub premiere of Dragon Ball Super was watched by over 1.6 million people. Woohoo! Number 7. Dragon Ball Super is on a 6 week production schedule, which allows enough time to create incredible animated episodes. However, at some points in the series, the production team fell behind to a four week production schedule which led to some horribly animated episodes <laughs> episode five <laughs> thankfully the show is back to a six week production schedule number eight toy animation addressed the poor animation quality for the blu-ray and dvd release however the english release will likely not be giving any additional animation tweaks number nine like many of the older fans akira toriyama complained about super's animation even though he's the creator it's up to Toei to create the look of the show. Toriyama only works on the story's manuscripts. Number 10. Toei Animation has outsourced animators from Philippines, Korea, and Hong Kong in order to meet tight episode deadlines. Creating an anime is way more complicated than it appears. Number 11. The English subtitles for Dragon Ball Super are produced by Toei Animation and then sent over to streaming distributors in multiple languages such as English, Spanish, and Portuguese as just some examples of official subtitles. Number 12. Masako Nozawa, Goku's voice, was happy about the new line saying, we've always used the word cho, which means super, with Dragon Ball in commercials, games, and the like. But the fact that the series is called Dragon Ball Cho or Dragon Ball Super is the best thing ever. Number 13. Nozawa also voices Goten and Gohan. You might recognize her voice from the other Dragon Ball series, as well as popular anime shows such as Dr. Slump, and One Piece. That voice gets around. Number 14. There used to be 18 universes in Dragon Ball franchise. However, one day Zenosama was annoyed and erased six universes from existence. Currently, there are only 12 universes. Number 15. Norihito Sumimoto composed the background music for Dragon Ball Super and the Dragon Ball C movie Battle of Gods, which had an epic score. Dragon Ball likes to keep it in the family. Number 16. When Battle of Gods was released, Akira Toriyama explained that Super Saiyajin Goto Goku only puts on a power scale of 6, while Beerus is at a 10. Now Wiz, on the other hand, is at a 15. However, at this point in Dragon Ball Super, those power scaling numbers are pretty much irrelevant. Number 17. Wiz is one of the few Dragon Ball characters who can alter time. However, he can only change up to 3 minutes into the past, as opposed to Kurnoa, the Supreme Kai of Time, who can erase entire timelines. Keep in mind though, that Kurnoa is not canon in any way, shape, or form. She is only in the video games. Number 18. Beerus claims he wiped out the dinosaurs
dinosaurs on Earth, which is a super weird thing to say because in Dragon Ball series, dinosaurs are like everywhere. Maybe he missed something. Number 19. Beerus' Japanese name, Birusu, was meant to be a pun for virus. However, Akira Toriyama mistook it for a pun on beer and continued naming all the gods of destruction after alcohol. Number 20. Vados and her brother Wiz also have names that both reference drinks. Her name comes from the Apple branding Calvados and Wiz comes from whiskey. Another one with an alcohol related name, Champa. The name Champa comes from Champagne. Number 21. The toy company Bandai announced that a line of Dragon Ball Super toys would be available in the United States in the summer of 2017. That's not that far away guys. Number 22. Beerus was originally supposed to be a lizard-like character that infected people with evil, but was changed to look like a humanoid cat instead. But I personally like this version better. What do you guys think? Number 23. Beerus' appearance is inspired by the Egyptian mythology and a hairless cat that Toriyama used to own. These inspirations are pretty obvious considering Beerus' wardrobe and the fact that, well, I mean, he's literally a cat. Number 24. Beerus was originally going to be a fork and a spoon to battle the Z fighters, but animation director Tadayoshi Yamamuro thought they would be difficult to fight with, so chopsticks it was. Number 25, Ryo Horikawa, who voiced Vegeta, also voiced Captain Falcon in Super Smash Bros. Let's do it, guys. Vegeta Punch! Number 26, before his official reveal in Super, Jiren's identity was actually leaked due to a misprint from episode title leaks. His name was later confirmed in the Dragon Ball Heroes arcade games across Japan. Number 27. Tien's look is based off Dr. Lao's outfit during his fight with Mercenary Tao. Number 28. Goku's English voice actor is Shin Kamo, an Iowa-born American. He is also known for voicing video games and the 2003 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles reboot. Number 29. Yamcha's black and white outfit is actually based off Gohan's look while he was waiting 10 days for the Cell games, which in turn is based off Bruce Lee's look in Enter the Dragon. Number 30. Goku and Vegeta's Super Saiyan God Mode was actually spoiled due to two action figures that were released 18 days before the movie Resurrection F. Number 31. Hit's name comes from the English word Hit and Hitman. I mean, that's, that's kind of obvious, right? His name was intended to inspire a feeling of danger. You could say that it was uh, quite a hit. <laughs> Number 32. Hit is the third character to make Goku actually shiver in fear during a battle. The other two were Raditz and Frieza. Number 33, Goku's fight with Hit mirrors his fight with Pecan in the other world tournament. These two fights are the only times he combines Super Saiyan transformation with the Kaioken power-up technique. Can't mess with the classics. Number 34, the recap sequence utilizes an instrumental version of Chala Her Chala, the 1989 Dragon Ball scene theme song. Number 35, Hit is actually the second assassin that Goku fights in the series. Mercenary Tao is his first. Number 36. In the anime, Hit swiftly defeats Super Saiyan Vegeta. However, in the manga, it's stated that the only reason that Hit won is because Vegeta doesn't have one tenth of his strength due to the previous Super Saiyan Blue transformations. Where's the refs on that one? Number 37. In all previous versions of Dragon Ball, Boma's mother and Mrs. Briefs' eyes were always closed, but in the Dragon Ball Super anime, sometimes they're actually open. Number 38. Hit actually made the debut in the game Dragon Ball Heroes in the seventh mission of the God Mission series and in Xenoverse 2. Hit is one of the playable characters that can only be attained by making a wish to Shenron. Number 39. Hit could have defeated Goku in the Universe 6 vs Universe 7 tournament. It is noted that Hit can't use his true strength unless he has an intention to kill. So even Goku states that Hit would have killed him by now if he hadn't been holding back. Number 4. 40. Joji Janami voiced the narrator and Kyle of the first 12 episodes, but due to old age and health issues, he was replaced by Naoki Tatsuta. We'll miss you, man. We'll miss you. Number 41. After the defeat of Zamasu, there are now officially six time rings. However, they only represent five timelines because the silver time ring can travel to any of the five timelines. Number 42. The trio of the dangers are all named after a member of the Lamiasi 
family of flowering plants. Number 43. The Dragon Ball Super manga has confirmed that Super Saiyan Blue is stronger than Super Saiyan God. So guys, the debate is over. Number 44. The trio of the dangers from Universe 9 all have a unique ability that their key is impossible to read. Number 45. When we first see Topo as the hooded man in the Universe Survival Sega teaser, he is depicted as being far thinner with a sash and a visible mouth. But this gave the impression that the man was Jiren. However, later, he was switched to Topo for the final release of Dragon Ball Super. Number 46. Frost and Hit are parallels to the villain Frieza. Frost was named after call-related items, which keeps with the Frieza race doing so. Hit was named after Heat. This hints at Frost being a villainous character and Hit being a heroic character. Cool, huh? Number 47. The reason Goku and Vegeta diffuse from Vegito is finally explained in Dragon Ball Super. The truth is... Anyone who is not a Supreme Kai can only stay fused for an hour max. Number 48. As a Dragon Ball Super, Trunks has defeated a form of every major villain in the Dragon Ball Z timeline. He has killed Dabura and Badidi, therefore preventing future Boo, and he has also killed the Unborn Present Cell and Mecha Frieza. Not to mention that he nearly killed Mirza Masu by the balls, okay? so. The dude isn't even a Super Saiyan God, but he's very impressive. Number 49. The peaceful Saiyan Kaba is a parallel to the warlike Saiyan race. His name is derived from cabbage in keeping with the Saiyan's name after vegetables. A healthy plot point. Number 50. The reason the show and manga adaptation went from calling the new form of Super Saiyan Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan to the simpler form Super Saiyan Blue was due to the fans. When the fans found that the original was way too wordy, they came up with a shorter name. Eventually, the official content picked up and followed suit. It's cool when things catch on. Number 51. Takeshi Kusao provides the voice for both Kid Trunks and Future Trunks. So that time when both versions chatted with one another, it was really just the voice actor talking to himself. So definitely, that's super talent. Number 52. Dragon Ball has always been big, especially since its revival in 2008. However, thanks to Super, Dragon Ball is once again Toei's biggest franchise internationally followed by One Piece. But in Japan, One Piece still reigns as the king. Dragon Ball is close to second though. Number 53. In episode 17, after the bank robber chase scene, Boma and Krillin are interrupted by a phone call. If you recognize Krillin's ringtone, that's probably because you're also a One Piece fan. The melody comes from the first opening theme of the pirate anime series We Are by Kidashi Hiroshi. Oh, and Krillin is voiced by Tanaka Mayumi, the same voice actor who plays Luffy in One Piece. Number 54. Like he usually is, Eduardo Garza is the director of the Mexican Spanish dub of DBS. So yes, there are different Spanish dub versions. Number 55. Two English dubs were produced for the show. The official American release is done by Funimation like usual. The other is done by Bang Soom Entertainment for the Toonami Asia broadcast of the series. Number 56. In the Dragon Ball Super manga, Vegeta was able to transform into Super Saiyan God. Keep in mind though, that the manga follows a different continuity than the anime. Number 57. Viz Media has the official Dragon Ball Super manga English translations available absolutely free on their website. You don't even need to make an account to read it, so I recommend that you guys check it out. Number 58. If you couldn't tell, Botamo's appearance is possibly based off Winnie the Pooh, and just like the cuddly bear, he doesn't wear pants. So cover up guys. Number 59. Right before his battle with Vegeta, Kaba poses exactly how Vegeta did when he fought Goku during the Saiyan Saga. Did you guys catch that? Number 60. Like many other properties, there are some differences between the manga and the anime. For example, he knocks out Frost for trying to steal the cube in the anime, but originally in the manga, it's actually Vegeta who brutally knocks Frost out. Number 61. Though Wiz stated that no one is more powerful than Zenosama, we believe that there is one person even more powerful. That person is Akira Toriyama because in the official encyclopedia of Daisenshu number 7, it says that the creator is the ultimate ruler of the Dragon Ball world. So take that, Zenosama. Number 62. Since Goku calls Champa Fat Beerus when they first met, many fans have taken to calling him as well. Maybe it's bullying like that which explains some of the sibling tension. Number 63. The Universe 6 Supreme Kai whom Champa 
grandpa is life-linked with shares a similar body type. Coincidence? Or is there no such thing? Number 64. V-Jump released a rival danger skill that went from 1, which is least dangerous, to number 12, which is the most deadly, to demonstrate just how much of a threat Goku's rivals were. If you decide to check it out, keep in mind that the scores only show how much of a threat these guys pose to Goku's life, not how powerful they actually are overall. Number 65. Monaka's name actually comes from a Japanese big suite of the same name. But guys, don't try to eat him. Number 66. Throughout the Dragon Ball series, many characters have had inconsistent height. One of the most notable is Krillin. Even though he's never been that tall, he's gotten quite a bit shorter in Dragon Ball Super. A while back, he used to come up to Goku's chest, but now he's up to his, um, <coughs> his midsection. Number 67. Zamasu translates from the Japanese to be or to exist. What's cool though is that Gowasu, which is Zamasu's former master, has a similar naming. Guess what their bond was? To be. Number 68. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see an animated version of Zamasu's battle with Kibito Kai. But if there's any fans out there who, you know, are really good with Flash, guys go right ahead. Number 69. The female Super Saiyan has many fun nicknames. And a few of those are Bro Lady, Kauli, Girl Broly, or Broly Chan. Number 70. Due to being a Kitsune with three tails, Likur is often called Tails like our furry fast friend Sonic. Number 71. Watching the anime, you should know that Goku Black's base form is at least as strong as Super Saiyan 3. Damn! Number 72. Sidra, whose hair and skin colors match those of the main antagonist in the Legend of Zelda series, is sometimes called Ganondori or Ganon Dwarf by fans. Number 73. Goku Black is the second character to carry the name Black in the series. The first was Staff Officer Black of the Red Ribbon Army. Number 74. For all of you Japanese language enthusiasts out there, Goku Black's name uses Katakana for Goku, as opposed to the kanji for Son Goku. Number 75. Zamasu is the second person to be promoted from Kai to Supreme Kai, though this was only temporary. Still, it counts. My dad would say to put it on the resume regardless. Number 76. The official Dragon Ball Super website has an infographic that depicts four timelines. Wait a second, shouldn't there be five? Number 77. Before Dragon Ball Super had official English subs, the fans took it upon themselves to translate the episode. There were multiple fan subbing groups subbing the episodes for the community free of charge. Number 78. Zamasu is now the second person to officially switch bodies with Goku. Do you guys remember the first? The first was Captain Ginju during the Frieza Sega. Number 79. A lot of people thought that Goku Black was somehow related to future Goku thanks to a scene where he touches his heart after fighting regular Goku in the present day, implying that there was a heart disease that almost killed Goku. However, it turns out that is not the case. According to Black himself, he traded bodies with the present Goku from a different timeline, thus it's not the same Goku who died of the disease. Number 80. Bulma created the nickname Goku Black so that she wouldn't be confused by regular Goku. I get how you could make that mistake. Number 81. Many fans weren't surprised that Future Trunks attacked Goku on sight, considering his PTSD from Black was triggered. Since Trunks remembered that Goku intended to stay dead, he didn't know that he was brought back to life by the old Kaioshin. Number 82. Super Saiyan Blue Vegito used the final Kamehameha in the anime, therefore making the name canon. The first time we saw it was in the video games and toy animation notice, which is why they implemented that into the anime. Number 83. Since many Dragon Ball Super fans also enjoy Juju Hakusho, they created a fan nickname for the sword that Future Trunks creates to slice apart Mur Zamasu. Since he did so by absorbing the spirit bomb and putting it into the sword, that name is Spirit Sword. What does Juju Hakusho have to do with that? Well, it's a nod to Kuwabata, of course. Number 84. Since Goku Black and Zamasu merged together, some fans have jokingly fused their names together to create a very scary name for the merge. It's, wait for it, Zack. Oh, the horror. Number 85. According to professional translators in the community, the English dubs are actually more accurate than the official English subs. So good job to you, Funimation. Number 86. Bola is finally born in Dragon Ball Super. But wait, is her name Bra or is it Bola? Well, in Japanese, her name is spelled Bura because the L sound doesn't exist in Japanese. However, 
If you call her bra or bula, both are technically correct. Number 87. The Grand Priest is also referred to as the Great Priest because both translations are correct. Number 88. In the anime, the Great Priest is said to be among the top 5 fighters in the multiverse, but in the manga, he is said to be the strongest fighter in the multiverse. Number 89. The Universe 11 God of Destruction's name can be translated as Belmod with a B or Velmod with a V. And the voice actor behind him is Masami Kikuchi, who also voices Monaka. Number 90. The Universe 11 attendant, Margarita, is actually a pun for the popular cocktail Margarita. Number Number 91. While Dragon Ball creator Akira Toriyama doesn't have a Twitter account, the Dragon Ball Super Manga artist Toyotaro does. You can actually follow him at Toyotaro underscore V Jump. Number 92. The Universe 7 God of Destruction Sidra is likely inspired from the legendary Egyptian god Bess. Number 93, the Universe 2 Goddess of Destruction Jerez is likely inspired by a mix of both Egyptian queens Cleopatra and Nefertiti. Number 94, little known fact, the Universe 9 Angel is named Mojito, which is a pun for the popular cocktail Mojito. Number 95, the four Gods of Destructions with the highest modal level rankings, which are Universe 1, 12, 5, and 8, were actually not designed by Akira Toriyama. In fact, they were designed by Toyo Taro. Number 96, not only was Universe 3 God of Destruction Moscow designed by Toyo Taro, but he actually suspiciously looks identical to the Dragon Ball GT character Machine Mutant, Lord Lud. In fact, in the direct Japanese translation, his title is literally God of Destruction Lud. Number 97. The anime and manga both reveal that Goku has never kissed Chi Chi before. However, a scan from Dissension number 5 reveals that Goku kisses Chi Chi after recovering from the heart virus. Number 98. Panasadol was at first named Planet Salad. Sarada in Japanese. It was later changed to Planet Sadara in both anime and manga. Number 99. The Dragon Ball Super Universe Survival Art promo cover photo originally shows the Universe 7 fighters in their fighting outfit. However, for April Fool's Day, Toy Animation uploaded the same cover photo, but instead the characters are all wearing suits. It's good to see that Toy Animation has a fun sense of humor. Number 100. Toy Animation's Dragon Ball Super website originally listed the Universe 2 God of Destruction as a warrior instead of a God of Destruction. And they also mistook Bergamo's bio with Lavender's bio. They actually had it mixed up for weeks. Number 101. Goku, Naruto, and various other anime characters have been honored to represent Japan at the 2020 Olympics as official ambassadors. Chichi will be so proud of Goku that he finally has a job. Number 102. If you pay close attention, you will notice that the present Omni King is actually right-handed while the future Trunks Omni King is actually left-handed and in fact, Toy Animation makes fun of this throughout the series whenever the future Omni King raises his hand and then he has to switch hand as he messes up. Hilarious. Number 103. The first time we see Vegito in Dragon Ball Super, his first line is All right! Which is the exact same quote that Vegito said back in Dragon Ball Z when we saw him for the first time, he also said, All right! Number 104. All the songs used for the Vegito vs. Merge Zamasu fight scene do not come from Dragon Ball Super, but in fact, they are actually coming from the Dragon Ball Kai 2014 OST. It is an epic OST. I recommend you guys get the album. Number 105. Dragon Ball Super Episode 69 featured a hilarious crossover with Dr. Slump characters such as Arale and others. But what you should know is that Arale and the other Dr. Slump characters do not exist in the Dragon Ball universe. They come from a separate continuity. It was done as fan service for the Dr. Slump fans. Number 106. In the very first episode of Dragon Ball Super, Toribot is actually on the money. You will see Toribot on the Zenny that Mr. Satan gave Goku. Number 107. Dragon Ball Super episode 73 wasn't the first time a great Seiyaman movie was made. Because back in Dragon Ball C episode 200,
205, there was also a scene of a great Seiyame movie being directed by someone that looks very similar to Commander Red. Akira Toriyama created the whole Dragon Ball franchise, but his successor is Toyotoro. Toyotoro is the artist of the Dragon Ball Super manga. He designs many of the characters and is helping shape the story of the new series. Toyotoro started his work on the Dragon Ball series with Dragon Ball Heroes, Victory Mission, the manga adaptation of the game. After that, he was requested to be the artist of Super and Toriyama selected him, the oob to his Goku. Okay, well, Victory Mission was Toyotoro's first official work. Before that, he created his manga for the fan mythological Dragon Ball AF. He had to stop making it when he got hired to create the real thing. While Toyotaro follows Toriyama's look and story for Super, he still has some room to improvise, such as adding his jokes or fight choreography. In fact, a fair share of the ideas belong to him. The cover of the first Super manga, which depicts Goku surfing on a dragon, was Toyotaro's idea. He wanted an image that immediately captured the look and feels of Dragon Ball, and that's what popped into his head. That's what I call rocking the dragon. Toyotaro's favorite Saiyan form to draw is the traditional Super Saiyan. It's no surprise that he also likes to have his hand in Super Saiyan Blue. Since it's almost identical, especially in a manga where there's no color, Toyotaro found the new, leaner Saiyan God look challenging to draw. He had to capture the muscular look without adding any actual bulk which is the exact opposite of Dragon Ball's character's usually inflated aesthetic. He's been drawing Goku since he was in school. He dueled him after breakfast, so he's got a lot of practice nailing his look. Despite taking the backseat during the production of Super, Toriyama can't resist getting his hands dirty now and then. Sometimes he'd check out the manga's progress and ask for edits, and he's not even on the payroll. It was a labor of love. According to Toriyama, Toyotoro came into his own during Super's production. For a while, it seemed he was trying to recreate the existing Dragon Ball until he found his voice and style. Both the manga and the anime are based off an outline of events by Toriyama. Because of that, the destination is the same, but the path that each medium takes sometimes differs, leading to some notable differences between the two. Stick around to hear about some of those twists and turns. Unlike the anime, which are adapted from a source manga, Dragon Ball Super's anime is considered the main product. Both sources were being worked on at the same time, though the manga eventually got further ahead and inspired some of the material for the anime. Allegedly, Toriyama's outline of the series entirely detailed the story from beginning to end. However, the production team revealed that the draft doesn't have an ending. Toriyama wrote as far as the Tournament of Power, but didn't wrap the story all up. Let's be real, sometimes Toriyama has goofy ideas. He pulled a George Lucas and explained why some people could go Super Saiyan more easily than others. It's thanks to their S cells a biological trait that makes more people more super. So sorry, no matter how much you clench your fists and scream, you're probably not going to go Super Saiyan. Back in Dragon Ball Z's Saiyan Saga, Goku's power level surpassing 9,000 was madness. It's over 9,000! What 9,000? Since then though, the scaling has raised so much absurdly higher that Toriyama had to adjust it for inflation. Now, if Goku is a 6, then Beerus is a 10, and Whis is a 15. Since the power scaling of Dragon Ball Super has gotten so out of control, with Goku and Vegeta literally in God tier now, the series has begun to focus on the importance of strategy in a fight. You can't always brute force your way to victory. Master Roshi's inclusion as a Universe 7 representative was a particular source of confusion for fans. According to the producers though, it's Master Roshi's unprecedented success in combat that qualified him to compete rather than power alone. When Sean Schimmel learned that he'd be returning to the role of Goku after so long, his first thoughts were, oh wow, more screaming. Brace those vocal cords, Sean. The character on the money that Hercule gives Goku in episode one is Robo Toriyama, Akira Toriyama's robotic anime avatar. Christopher Sabat's favorite line from Dragon Ball Super is Vegeta's declaration to an octopus in episode eight. I will eat your entire race. In episode 15, Goku gets hit by Hercule but forgets his tractor and drops down to grab it. The line used in the English dub was an outtake by Sean Schimmel, but they ended up using it. When Krillin fights Nappa in the Forest of Terror, he smacks him in the face with the same high kick that he used when the two fought in Dragon Ball Z. If you've ever made an anime theme song your ringtone, don't worry, Krillin is right there with you. His tone in episode 20 is from another anime. One Piece. In episode 30, Majin Buu is reading a comic book about another Majin, Neko Majin, who happens to be another Akira Toriyama creation. Battle of the Gods reignited the Dragon Ball franchise as we know it, but it may not have if not for Toriyama. 
He was unhappy with the original script, so he stepped in and made significant changes to Super Saiyan God and Beerus, resulting in the world we know today. In our last 107 Dragon Ball Super Fact video, we noted that Beerus claimed to have wiped out the dinosaurs, despite there still being dinosaurs all over Dragon Ball Z. Fans speculate that Beerus did cause the dinosaurs to go extinct, but Arali from Dr. Slump may have fixed it when she went back in time and pushed a meteorite back into space, which still doesn't quite explain where Beerus was involved. but. It's the best answer we got. Toriyama straight up forgot about Super Saiyan 2 during Battle of the Gods. He thought the transformation escalated from Super Saiyan straight to Super Saiyan 3. Must be the hair. While working on Battle of the Gods, Toriyama drew Android 18 with purple hair instead of blonde hair. It had to be pointed out to him that he colored it wrong. Hey, seeing in black and white does do that to you. It's not the only time Toriyama has gotten himself in a hairy situation. He changed Future Trunks' hair to blue in Super so that he'd look more like Bulma's son, even though present day Trunks still had purple hair. There's a theory among fans that all the colored Super Saiyan forms, gold, red, blue, rose, and green, correspond to the chakras. Despite grand theories like this, the reasoning for the blue hair can be boiled down to a simple creative choice. Super Saiyan God was red, so Toriyama decided to make the next form blue, because of colors? Super Saiyan Blue was almost Super Saiyan White. The color was proposed for the new form, but Toriyama said no because he had already given white hair to a different antagonist. It's likely he was referring to Zamasu, the villain of the next saga. For Resurrection F though, Toriyama needed some outside inspiration. When he found the song F by Maximum the Hormone, which is about Frieza, he realized that the character's popularity was enough to warrant a return. The song appeared in Resurrection F during one of the battle scenes. It was Toriyama's idea to adapt Battle of the Gods and Resurrection F into Dragon Ball Super. He was worried that kids may not have seen the movies and would have no idea who Beerus and Whis were. Yamcha's meme-worthy DBZ death gets parodied in Super's baseball episode. He ends up in the same pose, only this time he scores a home run instead of dying. That's redemption. Mosko's design is nearly identical to another character's, Lud from Dragon Ball GT. Lud was referred to as a god of destruction in GT, so the illusion must be on purpose. Copy Vegeta from the Universe 6 saga is voiced by Brian Drummond, who voiced the original Vegeta in the ocean dub of Dragon Ball Z. Besides their cool names, Frost and Frieza have another similarity. Their voice actors are brothers. Chris Ayers voiced Frieza and Greg Ayers played the role of Frost. Sadly, the two didn't get to work together because Chris had to step away from the role due to his life-threatening COPD. The part was picked up by Damian Mills. Mills has made a point though that the role still belongs to Ayers. His work was strictly meant to emulate and fill in the gaps for Ayers and not replace him. In 2015, King Kai's voice actor, Joji Yanami, departed from Super for medical reasons reasons. His absence explains why King Kai disappeared off the show too. It was out of respect for Yanami's health. Bulma's Japanese voice actor, Hiromi Suru, sadly passed away late in 2017 from an illness. She'd been voice acting the character since her first appearance in Dragon Ball in the 1980s. Goku Black was Toriyama's go at an evil copy of the hero, like fake Kamen Rider. His name also originated from Kamen Rider Black. Gohan's role in the Universe 6 and Future Trunks sagas is way less prevalent in the manga than in the anime. Since the manga can't afford to do filler, that means that Gohan's appearances in the anime are mostly just there to fill space. When Future Trunks arrives in the present, he attacks Goku just like he did in the Cell Saga of DBZ. Just like last time, Goku catches the blade. It's a nearly identical callback. Even though Future Trunks is an icon of the franchise, Toriyama came up with this saga to mix things up. Introducing an evil god character when all the gods had previously been kind raised the stakes and the tension of the series in a much needed way. Trunks' time machine pays homage to one of the most famous time machines of all time, the DeLorean from Back to the Future. It appears to be run by a flux capacitor. The most challenging scene for Toriyama was in the Future Trunks saga. It's when Mai gets hit, Bulma dies, and Goku Black is revealed. I imagine the scene was no cakewalk for Trunks either. Trunks' Supreme Kai training, for instance, was one of Toy Toro's ideas and was not present in Toriyama's outline. Vegeta was never intended to be in the future Trunks art. Toriyama didn't include it as part of his outline since he figured they'd never want to do it again. However, the power of fan service was stronger this time, and he was convinced to include the fusion. In Toriyama's draft, Vegeta wasn't even necessary to defeat Zamasu. That's because Zamasu was actually weak. Goku and Vegeta just had to team up to stop him. No fusion involved. According to Toy Toro, Zamasu is a more compelling villain than Dragon Ball has ever seen because he's not entirely evil. His warped sense of justice makes his side more understandable. According to a side story in the manga, Trunks was going to stay in the present after defeating Zamasu. However, after speaking to Gohan after seeing the new future, he decided to leave. 
Toriyama credits Toyotaro with the execution of the future Trunks saga. According to him, he would have had no idea how to express the psychology of Trunks in Zamasu's conflict on the page. That's why all of his villains were so outwardly malicious. When Goku and Bulma first met in Dragon Ball, she hit him with her car. The same exact meeting happens in episode 71 of Dragon Ball Super. After Piccolo and Gohan's training session in episode 88, they feast on an old favorite of theirs, Dinosaur Tail. This is the same meal they ate together when they were training back in the early days of DBZ. While Goku is waiting for Baba to return in episode 94, he reenacts the battle he had with his grandpa Gohan in the exact same spot in Dragon Ball. I I'm not crying. <laughs> You're crying. Toriyama's main idea for the Tournament of Power Saga is that it would be 80 people fighting in a jumble. Easier said than done. The production team has stated that working on an arc like the Tournament of Power is fun, but keeping track of all the characters involved is daunting. The Tournament of Power Saga takes place in the year 780 which is the same year that Trunks derived from in the Cell Saga. While the androids killed Gohan in the alternate future, now they've teamed up to save their universe. When Piccolo and Android 17 meet again in episode 94, they go through the same motions they did when they fought in the Cell Saga. Piccolo takes off his hat and Android 17 rolls up his sleeves. This time, however, they shake hands instead of throwing fists. Goku and Android 17 never actually met before the Universe Survival Saga. In fact, 17 got eaten by Cell back in Dragon Ball Z while Goku was off training. During the Universe Survival arc, there was a pitch for 17 and 18 to fuse into Android 35. However, the two did fuse in Dragon Ball Fusions, becoming Android 17 18. The Tournament of Power begins on the 3,135,563rd day of the Era of Our King, meaning Zeno has rode for 8.6 million years. Haven't they ever heard of term limits? Like most Dragon Ball characters, the warriors from across the universes all have puns for names. Universe 2 is named after meat, Universe 3 is named after Italian dishes, and Universe 4 seems to be named after plants. 9 is spices, 10 is periodic elements, 11 is kitchenware, and 6, 6 is kind of a mess. Universe 2's Jimenza looks more like the yard rats from the anime filler rather than Toriyama's conventional yard rat design for Dragon Ball Online. This creative choice was probably made for continuity's sake, even if the continuity is fluff. The Universe 3 warrior, Katopezla, is a homage to Kamen Rider. Besides both characters being cyborgs, they can also change their forms, and also share a similar taste in belts. According to Toyotaro's original designs, Universe 11's Belmont and Makarita were intended to be lovers. Toriyama wasn't into it though, and nixed the romantic angle. Ribrianne's full transformation was her original design by Toriyama. The anime team, however, decided to add her cute base form for contrast. As a result, Brienne doesn't appear in the manga because that idea wasn't part of their outline. Many of Brienne's moves are reminiscent of Toei's other Magical Girl series, Pretty Cure. Her introduction, signature attack, and even her hair pieces are homages to that show. Toriyama suggested that Tapo should be the God of Destruction for Universe 11. Seemingly having a God of Destruction mode was part of that as well. The separate God of Destruction mode became the distinction between the anime and the manga. In the anime, it was part of a reveal of his godly status. In the manga, it was known to be him. Fans have pointed out that Zerbudo, Robinra, and Zorloin all appeared to be based off villains in Dragon Ball GT, specifically Dr. Mew, Hachiak, and General Rildo respectively. Tapo, Jiren, and Dispo were all designed by Toriyama. Their personalities, however, as well as their fellow teammates, were left for the animators to worry about. Toriyama pictured Jiren as a stoic character with a tragic backstory. The anime production team, however, envisioned him as a campier, justice-obsessed warrior. When Toriyama informed them of his dead family, they shifted that personality over to Tapo. Because the animators intended for Jiren to have Tapo's personality, it's apparently him in the preview trailers of the arc. By the time the saga aired, the figure had changed to Tapo. Dispo's personality wasn't determined until they casted his voice actor. Based on that, they adapted his cocky persona. The rest of the Pride Troopers were also absent from Toriyama's outline. The animators designed these characters at Toei. Kale wasn't in the original Dragon Ball Super outline. It was actually the anime staff who created Kale after discussing Broly's popularity. They made the character a woman, though, to differentiate her from the legendary Super Saiyan. Khalifa was the afterthought, too. After Kale was created, Toriyama added Khalifa to go along with her. Master Roshi's strategy of bleeding all over the invisible fighter is gnarly, but it's not the first time it worked. Back in Dragon Ball, he did the same thing to reveal Yamcha's invisible opponent. Frieza has a habit of dramatically returning after a fake-out death. When it appears he was knocked out by Tapa during the Universe Survival Saga, he made a significant return in the same pose he did after a similar fake out back in Dragon Ball Z. When Frieza shares some of his energy with Goku, it's an exact role reversal of what Goku did after their fight in Dragon Ball Z. Man, this saga loves callbacks, huh? This callback scene wasn't part of Toriyama's plan either. It's just another case of anime showrunners fleshing out their side of the story with fan servicing callbacks. Like the conflict with Zamasu, Goku's battle with Jiren was meant to be more complicated than good versus evil. Toriyama wanted it to be about clashing ideas, where neither side was wrong. 
The language of the gods is just backward. Even the English dub takes the backwards Japanese and translates it as backwards English. Ultra Instinct compares to real life martial art technique, Mushin. This practice is noted for the user's absence of ego, which Goku displays during combat by not allowing himself to become a victim of teasing. The Japanese name of the Ultra Instinct form can't entirely translate into English, but it means something to the effect of the secret of the body moving on its own. The show chose the word instinct to capture this seamless sensation. Not even Goku's ultra instinct form was safe from being memed. Then possibly fast reflexes of the transformation become the basis of a bunch of clips using the same music and slow-mo. The producers are staying tight-lipped about the future of the franchise, but they do feel like Toriyama is using the Universe Survival Saga to open up more potential stories. The Universe Survival Saga is the longest in Dragon Ball history, as it lasts for over a year. For April Fool's Day 2017, Toei announced the Society Survival Arc an arc about the Dragon Ball characters facing the ultimate peril of getting real jobs in an economic crisis. With the conclusion of the Universe Survival Saga, fans got worried that Super finished for good. Even the voice actors commented on its end. The producers have indicated that the series isn't gone forever though, and maybe back in some way soon. If Dragon Ball Super is over, let's do a final score. Over the course of three years, 131 episodes of Super were aired, spanning five sagas. For comparison, Dragon Ball ran 153 episodes over nine major sagas. DBZ ran for 291 episodes over nine as well. And GT ran for 64 episodes over four sagas. It would be one of the shortest running Dragon Ball shows. It lasted just under three years. Less than Dragon Ball and Z, but still more than Kai. We're not, even though the anime is done for now, it'll be back on December 14th with a brand new movie, the 20th Dragon Ball feature film. The film will also be the first under the Dragon Ball Super title. While Battle of Gods and Resurrection F were adapted into Super, those movies were released under the name Dragon Ball Z. The movie, which was written by Toriyama, will not only explore more of the same mythology, but will also feature a long-awaited opponent. Mm, any speculation? It's possible that the movie will be about the first Super Saiyan God. A tale to tell it in an interview with Toriyama. According to the discussion, a good-hearted Saiyan named Yamashi became the first Super Saiyan, frightening the other Saiyans. They killed him, and now they say his spirit continues to wander to this day. Don't expect to see Bardock in the movie, though. If Toriyama's story is any sign, then the film is going to make episode of Bardock completely non-canon. Probably for the best. The change in art direction is thanks to designer Tadayoshi Yamamuro's lack of involvement in the film. Instead, Nanahiro Shitani will take over, providing a more fluid, less detailed look for the characters. The animators of Dragon Ball are undoubtedly big fans of the movie's redesigns. The crew has praised them for being far more animation friendly and closer to the style of the series from back in the day. For your continued Dragon Ball fix, there's an upcoming manga called Dragon Ball, that time I got reincarnated as Yamcha, about a fan who does just that. Somehow it's not an April Fool's joke. This is real and this is happening. What would Dragon Ball be without all the insane fights? The hype is unlike anything else and it's had people talking for years. Everyone's got a favorite fight too, so conjure up your pick because we're about to give you our top 10. Make sure to fight everyone in the comments to prove your fight's superiority. It's time for the top 10 Dragon Ball Z fights. Pretty sure it goes without saying, but this video will contain spoilers from the series. Come on guys, it's been 20 years. Catch up. We want to hear from you. Leave us your opinions in the comments. Which fights do you love and which ones should have made our list? Number 10, Funks vs. Frieza. Last season's Big Bad is back and he's badder than ever. Or at least shinier. And this time, Frieza's brought Daddy along for the ride. With no sign of Goku, who's gonna take him out? Vegeta? Gohan? Piccolo? Yamcha? Nope. Meet the new kid. The new kid who came out of nowhere, turned into a Super Saiyan, and stopped a bunch of Frieza's attacks. It's the first fight where the mystery outweighs the badassery. Who is this guy? How does he know Goku? How can he go Super Saiyan? And did he just dice the strongest tyrant in the universe? We all wanted these questions answered, and that's why it's on our list. Plus, Trunks uses the sword, which is awesome. Number 9, Goten vs. Trunks. This fight is very reminiscent of classic Dragon Ball. Goten's sweet, naive demeanor reminding us of Goku's early days battling in the World Martial Arts Tournament. Trunks goes all out, reminding us of Goku vs. Vegeta in the Saiyan Saga, but also giving us a glimpse into a more friendly rivalry than that of their predecessors. Most of the fights in the tournament so far have been pretty standard. Punch here, kick there, these adorable kids enter the ring start moving faster than anyone can see. Flying, blasting, and even turning Super Saiyan, even though you're not supposed to go 10, you dummy. For giving us a glimpse of the second generation Z Warriors, we give this fight our number nine spot. Number eight, Vegeta versus Android 18. Yes, finally, after all this time, Vegeta has become a Super Saiyan. 
He's kicking ass and taking names. Or should I say numbers? With Android 19 out of commission, taking out last year's model should be a cinch, right? Ooh, guess not! Vegeta had always thought that once he reached that Super Saiyan gold, nothing could catch him. Enter Android 18, an indifferent badass who doesn't like being referred to as a washing machine, so she hangs Vegeta out to dry. For teaching a Super Saiyan his limits, we give number 18 our number 8. Number 7, everyone versus the Ginyu Force. Frieza's most elite soldiers are on Namek, and they want the Dragon Balls. Doesn't everyone? So far, Vegeta's been killing off Frieza's men like it's nobody's business. But even he knows he's no match for the Ginyus. His only hope? To join forces with Gohan and Krillin to keep them at bay. But luckily, Goku finally lands on Namek and gives the guys the help they really needed. Woo! Sensu beans for everyone! After a lot of violence and body swapping, Goku is victorious over Captain Ginyu. If turning your enemy into a frog is any kind of win. What makes this fight great is it kind of plays out like a Street Fighter campaign, with each round getting progressively more intense, especially once Goku enters the fray, demonstrating his training in 100 times normal gravity. He had such a power-up, Vegeta thought he could be the stuff of legends, the Super Saiyan. But that's just silly, right? This fight pile drives its way into number seven. Number six, Goku versus Vegeta. Saiyan Saga. Remember Raditz? Well, on his way out, he took Goku with him and let two pretty powerful Saiyans know that Earth was home to the Dragon Balls. Thanks, guy. Everyone's been training for a whole year to take these guys on, including Goku under the tutelage of King Kai. What happens when they show up? They beat the crap out of everyone, of course. When Goku finally arrives, seeing 70% of his friends dead, he's pretty pissed. Let's do this. Saiyan Elite versus Saiyan Scrub. Gallic Gun versus Kamehameha. Half naked guy versus giant monkey. But with some help, okay, a lot of help, Goku wins out in the end and Vegeta returns to Frieza's base with his tail between his legs. Oh wait, Yajirobe cut his tail off. Whoops, marking the beginning of one of the greatest anime rivalries of all time. Are you really surprised it made the list? Number five, Vegeta versus Boo. After fighting with Goku, no, not that time, the other time. Vegeta's told a few home truths and has a lot to think about. Our big bad this week is Majin Buu, a weirdly innocent yet terrifying creature who seems to be indestructible. After getting some good hits in and leaving Buu pretty much unfazed, Vegeta has a moment of clarity. He hugs his son, has some real talk with Piccolo, and does what needs to be done, sacrificing himself for the greater good. Seeing Vegeta's heart and true repentance is definitely worth our number 5 spot. I'm not crying. You're crying! Number 4. Goku vs Majin Vegeta In a diabolical attempt to destroy the Z Fighters from within, Babidi capitalizes on Vegeta's inner turmoil, offering him power, allowing him to return to the cruel warrior he once was. This fight's a lot faster and more grandiose than their first. What do you expect, guys? They're both Super Saiyans now. Vegeta's trying to convince himself that he's returned to his evil, planet-blowing-up ways. And Goku's arguing that he's a big softie who loves his family. They get a rain check on the fight because that pesky Boo is busy beating up Goku's son. Even though they called a truce, Vegeta still cheap shots Goku and goes off to fight Boo on his own. Poor form, Veggie. See where that gets you. Number three, Goku and Vegeta versus Boo. Goku and Vegeta have been pulling out all the stops. They fused, turned Super Saiyan 3, fought every possible incarnation of Boo, even messed around in his guts, and they still can't take this guy down. Some quick thinking from Vegeta and Earth with all its people, except the most evil ones, are wished back thanks to the Namekian Dragon Balls. Next step in the plan? Spirit Bomb. Goku gets a tiny boost after Vegeta talks to the people of Earth, but it's Hercule who really saves the day, convincing every man, woman, child, and weird dinosaur thing to raise their hands and give Goku their energy. Don't act like you didn't. That should be it, right? He's still fighting back, really? But they've got one wish left. Vegeta wishes for Goku to be restored to full strength so he can turn Super Saiyan and at last take Majin Buu out. Man, that took a while. It's number three for capping off the series just the way we wanted. Number two, Gohan vs. Cell. For the entire show, we've been told Gohan's stronger than he knows. Well, Goku's trained him, Piccolo's trained him, even Guru released his hidden potential. Now he's all grown up, a Super Saiyan, and Goku thinks he can take on Cell. But Gohan doesn't want to fight. Um, Gohan, do you know what show you're in? He warns Cell that if he's pushed too far, he's afraid of the power that will be unleashed. Cell, of course, sees this as a challenge and does everything he can to piss off Gohan including birthing several Cell Juniors and having them beat the crap out of Gohan's friends and family while he watches. Not cool, Cell. The usual stuff gets thrown down. 
punches, blasts, etc. But one kick to the gut of Cell and he's throwing up Android 18 and reverting back to his second form. In an act of desperation, Cell decides to blow himself and the planet up. Seriously, Cell, what is your damage? Ever the hero, Goku instant transmissions Cell and himself to King Kai's planet, saving everyone. Oh, guess what? He's still alive. We're not even surprised at this point. In the end, it comes down to who's got the biggest Kamehameha. With Goku supporting him from the afterlife, Gohan comes out on top at number two. Number one, Goku versus Frieza. Sorry guys, but you knew it was coming. You know Frieza, tyrant and all around tool. Well, he wants to be immortal. Bad times. He's already taken out everyone who stood in his way, and now it's up to Goku. Fueled by his sane heritage, Goku fights on and gathers a spirit bomb, taking out Frieza. Hooray! Haven't you learned yet? They always come back. Frieza rises from his watery grave in an attempt to kill Goku. Fortunately for him, Piccolo blocks the attack with his chest. Poor Piccolo, he just came back to life. But Frieza's not done yet. He sets his sight on Goku's childhood friend Krillin and blows him up from the inside out. Nasty way to go. This triggers something in Goku. He achieves the stuff of legends, transforms into a Super Saiyan. Guys, this was a really big deal the first time, okay? Frieza panics and fires a blast into the core of Namek, stating they only have five minutes before the planet blows up. In DBZ time, that's actually an hour and 35 minutes. Goku finally gets the better of Frieza, declaring that his energy is too low and he's not a challenge anymore. Damn! You want some ice for that burn, Frieza? Goku tries to leave in peace, but Frieza, being the sore loser that he is, fires a destructo disc at Goku, which ends up coming back around and cutting Frieza in half. He couldn't just leave well enough alone. No, really, he couldn't. He tries to kill him again. It's the longest fight in anime history, coming in at 4 hours, 13 minutes, and it's our pick for number one. Being an icon means inspiring others with your actions. Goku inspires gym bros to get up every day and work hard. Vegeta inspires menaces to really continue with their unhinged behavior. Krillin encourages bald dudes to just keep on trucking, and Dragon Ball as a whole inspires other animators and comics artists to do their best. The influence that Toriyama's work has had on other cartoons and anime is quite noticeable when you take a look, so we picked some especially interesting ones and put them in a video. This is every Dragon Ball Z reference in cartoons you need to see. Johnny Bravo Many fans have fond memories of Johnny Bravo, a cartoon starring a meathead whose best feature is his perfectly coiffed hair. And in fact, the earliest Dragon Ball Z reference we could find in an American cartoon was in a 2000 episode of Johnny Bravo. In the season 3 episode 20,000 Leagues Over My Head, Johnny becomes obsessed with toys from a TV show called Clam League 9000. The show is a parody of several anime but it especially pokes fun at Pokemon and DBZ. Clam League's protagonist looks like he's got Goku's face on Ash's body, while his rival looks like a green Vegeta in a Team Rocket uniform. They both pull Pokemon-esque creatures from pocket clams, which resemble Pokeballs. One of the creatures, a penguin in case you were curious, lets off an energy bolt that can pass off for a Kamehameha. Also, we don't know whether the Vegeta character's green skin is supposed to be a reference to Piccolo, but we won't say it isn't. That's not confusing, right? The Kids Next Door The Kids Next Door did a full sequence based on DBZ in the 2003 episode Episode, Operation Report. Number 4 goes full Super Saiyan against a five-headed Frieza version of the delightful children from down the lane. The scene begins with Number 4 introducing himself as Number 4 Coop. He then blows some bubblegum into a balloon, which he throws like a Kamehameha energy attack. Finally, the Frieza children evolve into their full form, tripling in size and gaining more power, much like Frieza and Majin Buu did in DBZ. In response, Number 4 Coop gets even angrier and goes to Super Saiyan 2, or is it Super Saiyan 3, drawing the long golden mane characteristic of this transformation. Sadly, this doesn't work in number four's favor, as the giant Frieza character kicks him and his longer hair throws him off balance, causing him to topple over. It's a good gag and our favorite part of the scene. The animation in the episode also reflects some popular DBZ aesthetics, like barren landscapes and extreme color changes during moments of indecisive thought. It also parodies some classic dialogue with lines like, his power level's off the charts, I really gotta get bigger charts. Teen Titans Go. In Starfire the Terrible, season one, episode 29, Teen Titans Go, Starfire destroys Robin's year's supply of hair gel, which just so happens to be the thing that matters to him the most in the world. In a later scene, while the other titans are ridiculing him of his flat hair, Robin gets so upset that he messes his hair into a variety of famous styles. These iconic do's 
include Bart Simpson's buzz cut, Sonic the Hedgehog's spikes, and of course, Goku's locks from Dragon Ball Z. But that's not all. In Season 3, Episode 13B, the creators doubled down on the Goku and Robin mashup. The episode, titled Beast Boy's St. Patrick's Day Luck, and it's bad, features some pretty major DBZ references. When facing down a rude leprechaun, Robin decides to transform into a leprechaun himself, in a pretty clear homage to Goku's Super Saiyan transformation. Robin glows with energy and spouts a red leprechaun beard. To hammer the reference home, Robin does an imitation Kamehameha, yelling Shalala, which is actually an Irish weapon. So clever? Number 4, Mad. The animated series Mad, not to be confused with the live-action series Mad TV, was a parody series that aired on Cartoon Network from 2010 to 2013. In those few short years, the writers managed to include three separate sketches referencing Dragon Ball Z. That's one per year, guys. The first was Grey's in Anime, a Grey's in Anime parody in which one of the patients begins to see his life as a Japanese anime. The sketch references everything from Yu-Gi-Oh to Pokemon, but when one of the surgeon goes Super Surgeon, sprouting golden hair and losing his shirt, it's an undeniable nod to DBZ. In a more obvious reference, Mad combined the Brad Pitt film Moneyball, in which he plays general manager of the Oakland A's, with Dragon Ball Z. The title of the skit? Moneyball Z, of course. In this sketch, Goku and friends become baseball players on the cheap. The parody acknowledges that they'd be pretty good athletes, even if they don't understand the sport. Goku uses a spirit bat, which might destroy the world. In obvious reference to the spirit bomb from the Frieza saga and the Kid Buu saga. He also goes Super Saiyan 1 and 2, but without much of a payoff. This is probably parodying how long it takes for major events to happen in DBZ episodes. Still, we imagine the Super Saiyans could beat the Angels any day. Number 5, Adventure Time. Of course, Frederator's own Adventure Time has at least one DBZ reference, and it's a pretty cool one. In the episode Frost and Fire, the Ice King and Flame Princess show off a few DBZ-inspired moves in their final battle. First, when both are flying towards the battle, they're surrounded by a field of colored energy like Super Saiyan. Then, when they finally meet, Flame Princess is in Inferno shot looks just like Goku's famous Kamehameha, and Ice King's rebuttal looks an awful lot like Vegeta's Gallic Gun. For those who don't remember, this is a classic reference to an early DBZ episode, Goku vs. Vegeta, which was part of the Vegeta saga that started off the whole series. Observant viewers may also have noticed that the beams that Flame Princess and Ice King fire have the same colors, red and blue, as Goku and Vegeta's blast from that famous battle, The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Billy and Mandy did an entire episode in reference to Dragon Ball Z. It features a magic chicken ball and was appropriately titled Chicken Ball Z. The eponymous chicken ball isn't directly related to Dragon Balls. It's a magical chicken ball that Mandy eats. But there are still a couple specific nods to DBZ. First, the Junior Karate Championships, where Billy and Mandy end up fighting, looks just like the 25th World Martial Arts Tournament where the World Tournament Saga took place. In a more in-your-face reference, after fighting for a while, Billy and Mandy both back off and supercharge to their full power forms. This involves veins popping and yellow light, just like Super Saiyans. But neither gets a hair transformation or starts a Kameha. So we think they could have taken this thing a little further. Chowder. Chowder was an animated children's series that had a pretty short run about a decade ago. So if you don't know about this one, you're probably not alone. Even if you watch the show, the Dragon Ball Z reference happened so quickly, you might have missed it. In the Season 2 episode, Tofu Town Showdown, Chowder's friend Schnitzel transforms into Super Saiyan for a quick second. In the final battle of the series of martial arts fights, Schnitzel's almost defeated by his arch enemy, Peking Duck. After weathering many attacks, Schnitzel grabs his baloney sword. At the last minute, he gains newfound strength in a Super Saiyan-like form, complete with golden hair and blue energy glow. It's it's actually a pretty cool moment, but watch closely because if you blink, you'll miss it. The Fairly Odd Parents. In the three part series Channel Chasers from The Fairly Odd Parents, which to be honest is my favorite three part special ever, Timmy, Cosmo, and Wanda travel through various TV shows using a magical remote. One of these is a violent Japanese show called Maho Mushi, which is a parody of several anime, including Dragon Ball Z. In part one of a three part arc, we see an image of Maho Mushi sporting Vegeta's hair and outfit, down to his infamous digital eye scanner. Later in part three, when Timmy and the fairies finally enter into the Maho Mushi universe, we see the DBZ influence even clearer. Timmy and his babysitter Vicky have a showdown in a large arena setting, which looks a lot like something from the World Tournament arc. And while much of the early action is devoted to fighting with large mechs, the battle ends with Timmy and Vicky flying at each other as pink and green Super Saiyan lookalikes. Timmy's outfit and design looks a lot like Krillin's in the episode, and Vicky's dressed in Piccolo's armored clothes. Most distinctly, the loud, oddly moving announcer in the episode is a hilariously accurate parody of the ring announcer from the World Tournament in DBZ. It's all in the details. Robot Chicken. We'll end with a fan favorite, the Robot Chicken sketch of Very Dragon Ball Z Christmas. The sketch was featured in the Easter Basket episode of Season 2. It's a perfect bit to end with because it's one of the most direct and in-depth of all the DBZ references we found. In this sketch, Goku and Gohan are waiting for Santa on Christmas when Santa gets tossed down the chimney by a group of Kung Fu legends. These legends include a Nutcracker who knows over 100 testicle attacks, a Vegeta lookalike dressed as a little drummer boy, whose mystical drum summons demons most foul, and a half Santa, half Frosty the Snowman who has no obvious powers. To fight these villains, Goku and Gohan use a variety of DBZ attacks, 
First, Goku uses a spirit bomb to blow away the little drummer boy Vegeta. He also accidentally obliterates some nearby reindeer. Gohan then rides the flying Nimbus into the Nutcracker, who promptly kicks him, surprise surprise, in the nuts. Gohan, in the most obvious line ever, yells, Ow, my dragon balls! Then Rudolph gets some Super Saiyan-like powers and shoots red lasers from his nose. The group finally uses Kamehameha's to defeat the composite Santa and Mrs. Claus, who's revealed to be the mastermind behind the scheme to overthrow Santa. Got all that? A perfect cherry on top is when Goku throws down some solid Japanese, saying, The Tenkaichi Budokai is finally complete. For those who don't speak Japanese, Tenkaichi Budokai roughly translates to the strongest under the heavens fighting tournament, and it's also the original name of the world tournament in the DBZ manga. Pretty deep cut. Santa, like many viewers, responds with, Was that even English? We're past the midpoint of our video now, which means it's time for a refresher. Here's an episode of Know Your Show, detailing everything you need to know about Dragon Ball Z. Thanks, Chris Niosi. It all began with a Japanese comic artist by the name of Akira Toriyama. Known for his gag manga, Dr. Slump, and a penchant for poop jokes, Toriyama produced a new series for Weekly Shonen Jump magazine, in tribute to the Chinese folktale, Journey to the West. This new manga combined elements of action-adventure, comedy, martial arts, and even some science fantasy eventually, into the legendary story that would become known as Dragon Ball. The series began in 1984 and started with loose ties to its folklore basis, starring a character based on the Monkey King, Son Wukong, or as he's known in Japan, Son Goku. Although it was originally planned to be only a few volumes, its popularity quickly grew and Toriyama's publisher, Shueisha, urged him to continue the story further and further, a request that would eventually become common practice for about a decade. Two years after the manga had made its debut, Toei Animation decided to capitalize on its popularity by making an animated adaptation. The Dragon Ball TV series premiered with its first episode in 1986 and continued with weekly episodes, while the manga also continued its run on a weekly basis. As the story pressed on, Toriyama's art and storytelling became influenced by American superhero comics, and what started as a goofy, lighthearted parody of Journey to the West slowly evolved into a high-octane action series with flying, screaming, and energy blasts like you wouldn't believe. Five years had passed, and with close to 200 manga chapters and over 150 anime episodes, Toei Animation wished to rebrand the TV series to better reflect this new, slightly more serious direction the story was taking. So, at Toriyama's suggestion, they chose to retitle the show Dragon Ball Z, the letter Z at the time referencing the fact that Toriyama considered the story to be close to finished. This, of course, ended up being a bit of an inaccurate title, as the manga and anime series both continued onward for another five years. As Toriyama's legendary manga finally came to an end in 1995 with over 500 chapters, the franchise had become a hit in various countries, and it was time for Dragon Ball to make its mark on the United States. After a previously failed attempt by Harmony Gold, led by the people who brought us Robotech, a new attempt was made by a young, enterprising businessman named Gen Fukunaga and his startup company, Funimation. Thanks to his uncle, Nagafumi Hori, who was a producer at Toei Animation in Japan, Fukunaga was eventually able to raise enough money to license the rights to Dragon Ball for the U.S. market. An English dub of the first 13 episodes and the first feature movie of the original Dragon Ball were produced by Funimation, outsourcing the voice recording and script adaptation in Vancouver, Canada, a place where dubbing foreign cartoons had become quite common in the 90s. The original Dragon Ball series had trouble getting its foothold in the States at first, running syndicated on TV, but not quite hooking as massive of an audience as Funimation hoped. But 1996 was the year that changed it all. Back in Japan, Dragon Ball Z had just finished airing its final episode on January 31st, with Toei's new sequel series, Dragon Ball GT, coming soon after, which would carry on for 64 episodes and was not originally based on manga source material from Toriyama like its predecessors. But over in the US, deciding to forego continuing with the original Dragon Ball series, Funimation instead gave the smash hit Dragon Ball Z a try and aired its first episode with a new English dub in September of that same year. The first two seasons of Dragon Ball Z aired syndicated on American TV for about two years, co-produced between Funimation and Saban, the company that brought us the first series of Power Rangers in the US. The series was performing so well that it was actually given its own one-hour time slot for the second season. Though the series continued to build its following over these short years, Funimation and Saban cut ties after two seasons, leaving Funimation to continue production without them, next producing uncut English dubs of the first three DBZ movies with the help of Pioneer, but still outsourcing the voiceover and script writing to Canada. However, this all changed in 1998, when they could no longer afford to keep working with the folks at Ocean Studios in Vancouver without Saban's financial support. So, continuing ahead without them, Funimation had an open cattle call at their headquarters in Dallas, Texas, seeking actors to fill in for the entire cast of the show, picking up from where they left off. Their first production? An English dub of the second Dragon Ball movie, Sleeping Princess and Devil's Castle. With an idea of how to create the show in-house now, it was time to turn their attention back to DBZ. They took this opportunity to produce both an edited version of the show suitable for television, as well as, after about a 
year or so of constant pleading and petitions from fans, bilingual DVDs with uncut footage of the Japanese language track. With a new production team, and thanks to the success of DBZ's run on Cartoon Network's Toonami programming block, the English dub continued onward and finished up for the rest of the series, becoming a flagship show for Toonami and finding incredible success in North America. By 2003, all of Dragon Ball Z and even a new English dub of the entire original Dragon Ball series had aired on Cartoon Network, with Dragon Ball GT coming soon after in the fall of that same year. Through reruns and countless video games, DBZ continued to prosper in both Japan and America, and another resurgence would occur in 2009 with the arrival of Dragon Ball Kai. This version of the show, originally produced to garner a new, younger audience in Japan, was tremendously cut down from the massive 291 episodes of Dragon Ball Z to just a little over half of that, a total of 167 episodes, edited in a faster pace akin to Toriyama's original manga with slightly updated visuals, namely a few retraced scenes, new music, and new voice recordings. This allowed Toei Animation to cut much of the filler material that had been produced during DBZ's original run in the 90s, extra material created in order to not catch up with its manga counterpart, and thereby run out of source material to draw from in the first place. On the English side of things, Funimation picked up the refreshed show in 2010 and seized the opportunity to dub Dragon Ball Kai in a style more akin to their usual English dub work they had been conducting by that time, accurately respecting the Japanese version's original script and with their voice cast now having almost an entire decade's worth of acting experience under their belt to provide better performances. Although Dragon Ball Kai didn't see massive success in Japan, it did incredibly well overseas, including in the US, as it aired on both Nicktoons during weekday nights and the CW4 Kids on Saturday mornings, not to mention an uncut DVD and Blu-ray release. With Japan taking a break from producing Dragon Ball Kai, things seemed to die down for a while, until 2013, when some divine intervention happened in the form of an all-new Dragon Ball Z feature film, Battle of Gods. Although Toei had produced 17 Dragon Ball films alongside the series since the 80s, this particular case was on a far bigger scale. Co-produced by 20th Century Fox with creator Akira Toriyama himself directly involved with the story and characters, which we only just recently learned was due to his disappointment at not being listened to during Dragon Ball Evolution's production in 2009, thanks Hollywood, this new movie continued the story after the defeat of Majin Buu during the z portion of the Dragon Ball story, with Toriyama treating it as if the manga had continued further beyond where he stopped drawing it weekly in 1995. Speaking of Majin Buu, the franchise's overall success prompted Toei to continue production on Dragon Ball Kai, finishing up the rest of the series in the form of The Final Chapters, which cover the rest of the show up until the end of the original series. As it pressed on airing in Japan, another massive event happened in the form of a second new movie, this time written by Toriyama himself from the start. Dragon Ball Z Resurrection F premiered in the United States in April 11, 2015, with a red carpet premiere in Los Angeles in Japanese with subtitles, and saw a wide theatrical release in Japan the following week. The English dub premiered first on 4th of July weekend during Anime Expo 2015, with a bigger theatrical release plan for the summer, along with something even bigger. After Dragon Ball Kai The Final Chapters finished airing its last episode, an all-new series continuing the story past the two recent movies, Dragon Ball Super, began airing in its place on July 5th, a new animated series for the first time in 18 years. In short, Dragon Ball Z is awesome. And with all of this knowledge about the show's origins, how about the show's evolution? Things have really changed for Dragon Ball over the years, and it's really fascinating to look back at how far it's come. Get ready, because next up is Dragon Ball Z Then vs. Now. Overwhelming opinions. The fans close in. First off, we should warn you that we're covering all of the episodes that have come out with English subtitles, so if you're watching the dubbed version, be warned, there are spoilers ahead. Let's start with the fans, because their devotion is what keeps bringing this franchise back to life. Considering Dragon Ball Z debuted in 1989, its continued and recently renewed success speaks volumes about its quality and fandom. However, the same can't be said for its sequel shows. When you have a series this beloved, it's hard to follow up with something that'll appeal to every fan. Dragon Ball GT, the original follow-up to Z, was no notoriously panned. Fans have criticized the regurgitating storylines, bad animation, crazy new transformations, and the reinterpretation of Goku's character as a child. Even Dragon Ball Kai, which is a direct remaster, recut, and retelling of Z, divided the fan base. Some fans didn't know what to make of its new score, and some fans missed the character explored of filler. But the fan love persisted, so when the Battle of Gods movie came out, everyone in the world raised their hands in unison and threw millions of dollars at it. Things were beginning to look up. The promise of a new show with creator Akira Toriyama back at the helm, Dragon Ball Super, was 
the promise of a return to the glory days. Unfortunately, Dragon Ball Super was no less divisive. While many fans love Super, it's often criticized for pretty much the same stuff as GT. Regurgitated storylines, bad animation, crazy new transformations, and a reinterpretation of Goku's character as more childish. Hmm, I'm seeing a trend here. These subsequent Dragon Ball series are torn between recapturing the magic of the original, yet redefining themselves at the same time. Which actually leads me to the next difference. The tone evolves again! Who can stop it now? While Dragon Ball Z's pop culture legacy is its increasingly over-the-top transformations, drawn-out power-up sequences, and self-declarative key attacks, we can't forget that the franchise originally kicked off with Dragon Ball, which was an animated comedy. Long before the days of planet-destroying gods and time-traveling androids, Bulma gave Goku a bath and he didn't know to cover up his Dragon Balls. That's the kind of series this was. It had bathroom humor. As Dragon Ball progressed towards the King Piccolo saga, the otherworldly villains and martial arts action shifted into the foreground. By the time the series wrapped up, most of its comedy had been pushed to the wayside. It opened up the doors for Dragon Ball Z to become the full-fledged action series that it's remembered as. With GT and Super, on the other hand, there seemed to be an effort to restore the franchise to its earlier, lighter tone. Emphasis on effort. At the beginning of GT, Emperor Pilaf and his minions make a comeback and wish for Goku to be a kid again. A throwback to Dragon Ball on every level. However, with the entrances of saga big bads like Baby, Super 17, and Omega Shenron, GT2 was punch first, laugh second. Super is actually stuck with the lighter tone, while still keeping the action to a maximum. It takes all the fighting and action of its predecessors and plays them for laughs, much to the chagrin of some fans. You can't please them all, right? This is yet another area where fans are divided. Some enjoy the lighthearted tone, while others find it to be a jarring and out-of-character change from Z. In Z, threats like Majin Buu were treated with utmost severity, and when the planet was in peril, it was you know, an issue. In Super, literal universes are being destroyed, and it's not that big a deal. Then again, now that the Z Fighters have become so divinely powerful to the point that they're literally the strongest in their entire universe, maybe sitting back and laughing is the best thing we can do. And on that note, up, up, and away! The stakes just keep flying higher. In the very first episode of Dragon Ball, Bulma is abducted by a flying dinosaur. I know, simpler times. Goku quickly dispatches it using his power pole, and the threat's over. It's a short bump in the road at the dawn of their early adventures. In the latest Dragon Ball Super arc, by comparison, Goku is competing in a tournament between the 12 universes, wherein the losing universes are completely erased from existence. The stakes have gone up quite a bit. The rise has been so steady that you may not even be able to pinpoint the exact moment that burgling dinosaurs were replaced by universe demolishing gods. It's not as though Vegeta declares a power level and crushes his scout at each and every upswing, but from the days of facing the crane school at the world tournament to the current days of defending universe 7 at the tournament of power, the forces opposing our heroes have mounted higher and higher. Though Goku is still competing in tournaments, the more things change, the more they stay the same I guess. Mustachioed Vegeta? How did we let this happen? You can always count on Goku and Vegeta's fashion senses to say the same too. Super has garbed them up with new outfits since the Z days, but they're just variations of the same old getups. Saiyan armor for Vegeta, and a blue and orange gi for Goku. This return to the classic look is a welcome change compared to the outfits in GT. Goku gets to say an adult this time around, and Vegeta isn't rocking the midlife crisis dad look, complete with midlife crisis mustache. Technically, Saiyan hair isn't supposed to change anyway. He and Goku do grow out some beards before a tournament in Super, but come on. That's way more badass than this caterpillar face. Hmm, wonder what that thing looks like in Super Saiyan Blue. While Super did make some fashionable selections for Vegeta and Goku, it missed the mark updating some of its other characters. Rather than using Z's Mystic Gohan or GT's suit and tie Gohan for instance, Super gave us the nerdy, out of practice green tracksuit Gohan. The worst of all Gohans. And that's including the great Saiyan man. Fortunately by the Tournament of Power, Piccolo restored Gohan to his former glory, but the green tracksuit was one change we could have definitely done without. Even weirder though, if that's possible, is Future Trunks' redesign, because now he has blue hair. And a side note, this isn't in a script. I literally thought Trunks' hair was gray the entire time, but apparently it's purple? Who else thought it was gray? Comment down below, please. <clears throat> anyway, back to the script. Like, that's not a transformation. That's just his hair. When Toriyama first created Trunks, he intended for him to have that hair color, like his mother Bulma. But when the anime was developed, the colorist gave him purple hair instead. Because Toriyama did the concept art for Super, he brought back the blue hair, even though Kid Trunks still has purple hair. Come on, guys. Some fans do say that his hair grows from purple to blue, like his mother Bulma. Massive breakdown. Poorly drawn god of destruction. Generally, as any anime or cartoon progresses, the visuals get better and better. More money is coming in, the artists grow more skilled, and the technology develops. Dragon Ball Super amassed quite a bit of notoriety in its early episodes because of the huge steps back it took in quality from Dragon Ball Z. Like, I'm pretty sure they just had a ditto standing in for Beerus. Granted, Z never had perfect animation either. However, it was created decades ago, and at the time, it wasn't Dragon Ball Z. We didn't expect perfection. Even so, this isn't a they-just-don't-make-them-like-they-used-to scenario. No, these exact same Super 
sequences looked great in the Battle of Gods and Resurrection F movies just a couple years back. So why the heck did the quality drop so significantly? Producer Norhiro Hayashida has attributed it to the animators lack of experience and the pressure on them to rush a lot of the content in a short period of time. And it seems like animators invested most of their resources in big battles and transformations. See, we were looking at Super as a continuation rather than a fresh start, so we were expecting the quality to have escalated higher and higher. But really, this is just the very beginning of these animators' training. They probably can't even go Super Saiyan yet. They're only going to get stronger going forward. Besides, Super has been looking better these days. The animation still lacks the grit and texture of the original series, but at least there's no more Ditto Face Beeruses to be seen. Maybe because everyone's glowing all the time. Die Hard fans will be glad to know that the team reanimated some of the notoriously bad scenes for the Blu-ray. And as a side note, I was watching a couple Super episodes on Funimation the other day, and they don't look that bad anymore. The legendary Super Saiyan appears, followed by like seven more. Remember back when Raditz, Nappa, Vegeta, and Goku were the last of the Saiyan race? And how it was a big deal that Gohan with his little tail was half Saiyan too? Or how about when Vegeta discovered the legends of the original Super Saiyan, who was said to appear every thousand years, were true after Goku first went gold and sparkly on Namek? These were huge plot points and shocking revelations about the survival of the Saiyan race. Then in the words of Vegeta, When was it that the transformation to the legendary warrior of the Saiyan race was reduced to a child's plaything? Soon enough, everyone could go Super Saiyan. Future Trunks learned how to do it, and then Vegeta, Gohan, Goten, and Trunks again hopped aboard the SS Super Saiyan 2. The ultimate legendary transformation gradually became the new norm. Super Saiyan 2 through 4 were introduced, tapping even further into the untapped power. Goku still had to be the strongest warrior though, so then they introduced Super Saiyan God, an obvious peak for the Saiyan transformation, right? Well, then Goku went Super Saiyan Blue, and so did Vegeta. Isn't anything exclusive around here anymore? And spoiler alert, Goku was recently absorbed into a spirit bomb and unlocked the Ultra Instinct form, because who even knows anymore? Once all the surviving Saiyans could go Super Saiyan, the creator had to add more Saiyans. In Super, a full planet load was discovered over in Universe 6. In that alternate universe, Frieza didn't wipe the race out, so they've been living on planet Sadala as galactic defenders. Speaking of Frieza, the fan favorite gets a new transformation of his own, Golden Frieza. We were introduced to the Saiyan warriors Kaba, Broly, I mean Kale, and Caulifla, all part of your balanced diet of Saiyans. And wouldn't you know it, they can all go Super Saiyan 2. These characters are going to be fun and compelling additions to the story going forward, but does retroactively make all the last Saiyan talk pretty overdramatic. Then again, we should always be skeptical of Dragon Ball lore because the entire canon is in peril. What is and isn't real? Canon in the Dragon Ball world is a delicate subject, and it's not just because Future Trunks keeps time traveling back to redo history again and again. There are something like 20 movies in the franchise and the feasibility of them being placed into the official chronology varies. From Dead Zone, which mostly fits into the anime's canon, to Bio Broly, which is nothing and we wish it were gone. There are so many what-if stories and alternate timelines to accommodate. Even creator Akira Toriyama has written them all off by stating that he thinks of them as stories from other dimensions. When Dragon Ball GT came out back in 1996, it seemed to paint the clearest picture of Goku and his friend's future in this dimension. But when fans came together and concluded that GT wasn't actually all that good, it wasn't out of bounds to say it was non-canon. Toriyama has also called GT a side story, so just like a censored kill, you know it's been sent to the next dimension. Either way, with all that's happened in Super so far, there's no way the two series could possibly take place in the same timeline. You think everyone just goes through all of GT without bringing up the time they all became gods? Nuh-uh. From back then till now, the entire shape of the Dragon Ball future looks different. Since Akira Toriyama is actually involved with Super, it's the most canon continuation of the series we have. Of course, it's brought its own new issues as well. Inexplicably, within years of their theatrical releases, Battle of Gods and Resurrection F were both recreated as arcs on the show. Just as inexplicably, there were actually differences between the movies and their TV counterparts. So now we're not even sure which parts of Super are in this dimension anymore. All the more reason for us fans to stop debating one another and just enjoy the shows we love. We're not just looking at the evolution of DBZ though, we're also going to take a look at GT and Super. Let's get into it. In 2013, the legendary Dragon Ball returned with Dragon Ball Z Battle of the Gods. Fans were delighted to see new Dragon Ball material for the first time in over 15 years. For many, the film was a welcome return to Dragon Ball Z, a series that helped define 90s kids' childhoods, mine included. The movie was popular enough that it led to a full series, Dragon Ball Super. That picked up where Dragon Ball Z left off, beginning with an expanded version of the Battle of the Gods storyline. But this wasn't the first sequel to Dragon Ball Z. In the mid-90s, Dragon Ball GT began airing in Japan. GT was a sequel that took some major creative risks and ultimately was poorly received by many viewers. 
When GT first began airing in Japan, it was as if the first episode of GT picked up right where Z left off. However, despite the fluid transition, the story of GT was the first show to be based on the material not originally written by series creator Akira Toriyama. Toriyama was in the mix, however. He contributed story and new character designs. Ultimately, GT had a relatively short run of 64 episodes, compared to Dragon Ball Z's 291. Toriyama's involvement in Dragon Ball Super is more of a collaborative role. While he isn't exclusively in charge of writing or character design, he still creates characters and plot elements that are incorporated into larger stories. Super has already outlasted GT with 131 episodes, with the series continuation currently unconfirmed. American viewers who wanted to see Dragon Ball GT for the first time, outside of reading about it in fan forums or in Beckett Dragon Ball Z Collector magazine, had to wait until the series began airing on Toonami in 2003, a full seven years after it debuted in Japan. Watching Super in America has been a much more forgiving experience as viewers didn't have to wait at all. Subtitled Japanese episodes were released concurrently in America and Japan, while a dub featuring the classic group of American voice actors has been airing on Toonami since January 7th, 2017, for those who prefer the anime dubbed or are nostalgic for the voices of their childhood. Dragon Ball Super picks up almost immediately after the end of Dragon Ball Z's Majin Buu saga. Gohan, for example, is about to be a new father at the series' opening. His wife, Videl, is still pregnant with Pan, who's already been depicted as a four-year-old in Dragon Ball Z's epilogue saga. Bulla, the daughter of Vegeta and Bulma, who shows up in DBZ's epilogue and GT, also has yet to be born, only showing up as a newly born baby mid-series. Dragon Ball GT, by comparison, starts 10 years after the epilogue, and Pan is not only 14 years old, but featured as one of the series' primary three characters, alongside Goku and Trunks. And Bulla, while not a main character, is a tween and shows up from time to time. The biggest change made by GT is that at the series' opening, Goku is transformed into a child due to an accidental wish by classic Dragon Ball villain, Emperor Pilaf. Since Goku is reverted to a child, which if we're to assume, means he's around the same age as in Dragon Ball, which would make him about 12. Trunks, who is first an adult male from the future, then later a present day child in Dragon Ball Z, is the oldest of the central crew at just 23 years old. Weirdly, this also means most of the fighters from the previous series are initially weaker in GT. Goku's powers are weakened as he's transformed into a child, and Pan and Trunks simply haven't had the training to become as powerful of Saiyans as the heroes of DBZ. Important characters from GT are also sidelined, like Vegeta and Gohan, who've settled down into more domestic lives, rather than keep up their training. This is symbolized by Vegeta rocking a mustache, in case you didn't believe he hadn't truly gone full dad yet. While Super is similar in this regard, with Gohan pursuing scholarly studies for example, he is not fully given up on saving the earth, and is still a formidable fighter, choosing to continue his training in order to protect his family. Vegeta is still very much in the picture too, maintaining his rivalry with Goku, which pushes both characters to get stronger and stronger throughout Super. The rivalry somewhat taking center stage in many of the series arcs. Super, however, makes some singular changes to what is established in DBZ. Supreme Kai, for example, who fused with his attendant Kabito midway through the Buu saga, utilizes the Namekian Dragon Balls to undo the fusion, reverting him back to his original appearance and reintroducing Kabito as a character. Super, however, makes some of the singular changes to what was established in DBZ, and the two remain that way through the balance of the series. Additionally, King Kai is dead, still sporting a halo from the time Goku teleported an exploding cell onto his planet, and constantly reminds Goku of this fact, maintaining a running joke in the show where the hapless Goku is yet to revive him. The biggest addition to the world of Dragon Ball is Beerus, the god of destruction. Originally, Beerus was introduced in Battle of the Gods as a new villain, and while he retains this role essentially in Super's first arc, he eventually more or less joins the side of the good guys, and his position as the universe's most powerful deity and warrior informs much of the plot of many of the subsequent arcs of the series. His attendant, Whis, is a originally introduced as something of a foil, but when the series advances past the ground already covered by Battle of the Gods, he steps more into his own, and is revealed he was Beerus' teacher, leading to his training of Goku and Vegeta. A couple of arcs later, another god of destruction and Beerus' twin, Champa, is introduced, leading to the revelation that there are 12 universes in total. In Universe 6, the twin universe to the seventh universe in which the series up until this point has taken place, then becomes the source of many of the show's new characters, including some new Saiyans and Namekians. Eventually, heroes and villains from the other universes are woven into the series as the arrival of Zeno, the king of all 12 universes, 
multiverses is introduced, opening the show up into a true multiverse. Another addition entirely new to the Dragon Ball world is Galactic Patrolman Jocko, who first visits Earth to warn of the return of a resurrected Frieza, and is revealed to already be friends with Bulma. He quickly becomes part of the crew, though he's mostly sidelined as comic relief. Perhaps one of the most curious additions to the DBZ epilogue saga is Oob, a reincarnation of Kid Buu, or Majin Buu's evil half, who is now good, but supposedly retains some of Buu's power. This would seem to suggest a significant addition to the series, however, Oob is only mentioned a couple of times in Dragon Ball Super, getting much less screen time than good Buu. While he appears in GT as a competent warrior, having been trained by Goku, he's ultimately just a side character. Oh, and the Pilaf gang returns, still up to their shenanigans collecting the Dragon Balls and somehow working for Bulma? You can't have a Dragon Ball series without awesome transformations. Dragon Ball GT essentially introduced one new level of transformation, Super Saiyan 4 which is attained not through powering up through each previous Super Saiyan form, but by transforming into a golden version of the Great Ape form, and then powering up from there. The return of the Great Ape was something of a throwback to Dragon Ball in the early days of DBZ, as this bestial Saiyan form was eventually abandoned, with the show Saiyans cutting off their tails to prevent the transformation from ever occurring again. Super Saiyan 4 looks completely different than any Dragon Ball transformation of the past, or future for that matter, as it's something of a middle ground between Super Saiyan, regular looking Saiyan, and Ape, but with red ape fur for some reason. Thanks to Super Saiyan 4, we eventually see some DBZ level action in GT, with the ultimate culmination of this transformation being Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, which anyone like me who visited Dragon Ball themed GeoCities growing up knows as the most powerful Saiyan possible at the time. Aside from the mythic Dragon Ball AF's Super Saiyan 5 Goku, of course. All of that would change though with Dragon Ball Super's new transformations, which introduced Super Saiyan God, which is more powerful than DBZ's Super Saiyan 3, as well as a series of increasingly powerful transformations building off of it. Super Saiyan God is first introduced in the fight against Beerus, and is only possible through a ritual involving five other Saiyans, one of whom happens to be the unborn Pan in Videl's belly. It turns Goku's hair and eyes red, and gives him a generally younger demeanor. This doesn't get a whole lot of play, however, a Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan is introduced in the very next arc, and looks similar to the original Super Saiyan form, but with blue hair instead of yellow hair. A mouthful, yes, and later redubbed as Super Saiyan Blue. While the idea of a Super Saiyan God was first introduced through a vision witnessed by Beerus, which acts as a catalyst for his visiting of Earth and informing the Saiyans of the existence of such a powerful form in the first place, the addition of the powerful deity Beerus and his teacher Whis eventually leads to Goku and Vegeta learning from Whis how to harness divine energy in such a way that they not only no longer need the ritual to transform into Super Saiyan God, but can even transform directly from Vanilla Saiyan to Super Saiyan blue. While this is more or less the cap for Super Saiyan forms, Goku is the first to improve the form's power, utilizing the Kaioken technique in a throwback to the pre-Super Saiyan days of DBZ. Kaioken can multiply its user's power by up to a factor of 20, but now, rather than multiplying his base power level, he's multiplying the power of Super Saiyan Blue, though it's also quickly shown to have a strain on his body. Vegeta eventually gets his own powered up version of Super Saiyan Blue, achieving a limit break of sorts in a battle against Jiren. Goku is also taught a skill by Whis that comes into play around this time called Ultra Instinct, which is more of a focusing of power and reliance on instinct than a direct power up like Vegeta's Limit Break. But yet again, another way to make the already insanely powerful Saiyans even stronger. After awesome transformations, the next most essential ingredient for a quality Dragon Ball series is its villains. Most of Dragon Ball GT's primary villains feel like throwbacks to ground covered by DBZ. In GT's first saga, the villains are a series of aliens almost akin to Frieza, the primordial Dragon Ball Z villains of sorts. Then its first big villain is Baby, who is something of a throwback to the major big bads of DBZ, sporting multiple forms like Frieza, Cell, and Boo before him. Concave ears somewhat similar to Frieza's and a small, muscular alien physique similar to Kid Boo. His creator is Dr. Mew, who is not only a figure similar to DBZ's Dr. Zero, but even teams up with Dr. Zero to bring back a stronger version of Android 17 the villain straight out of DBZ. That arc also features an appearance by Cooler, Freezer's brother, who had before only ever been a villain in non-canon DBZ movies. 
Something unique to Dragon Ball GT was the introduction of consequences if there are too many wishes from the Dragon Balls. Too many wishes unleashes the Shadow Dragons, a formidable group of opponents but are almost all defeated by Goku. Following the trend of villains becoming heroes from DBZ, like with Android 18 or Good Boo, and even extending back to Dragon Ball, which first introduced Yamcha, for example, as a momentary antagonist, some of the first villains in Dragon Ball GT are the Para Para Brothers, an early throwback to Dragon Ball's levity who fight through the power of dance. Eventually, they basically switch sides and help Goku defeat Lord Lude, the series' first big bad. Basically, the DNA of DBZ was strong in GT's villains. That's the case in Super 2, which, returning again to THE DBZ villain, if there ever was one, brings back Frieza. First introduced through an arc where he's revived and achieves a new golden Frieza form, eventually even becoming a recurring character outside of his resurrection arc and fighting alongside Goku and friends in the Tournament of Power. Also participating in the Tournament of Power and first introduced in its predecessor tournament between Universes 6 and 7 is Hit, who becomes fast rivals with Goku, improving his signature time skip technique significantly throughout the course of his first fight with Goku, introducing a rivalry built on respect between the two fighters, which leads to the two characters working together later on in the series. In a move similar to GT bringing Cooler into the mix, Dragon Ball Super introduces a proxy for Broly, who is a recurring movie-only villain and another Saiyan you're very familiar with if you used to visit DBC GeoCity sites. The dude looks strong. Since he ever only appeared in movies, his place in the Dragon Ball world is non-canon. However, the introduction of a new Saiyan planet in Dragon Ball Super allowed them to incorporate Kale, who wears an outfit almost identical to Broly's and sports identical Super Saiyan hair, even retaining a similar legendary greenish-yellow tint. The one significant difference being her gender. Eventually, a primary villain emerges in the Tournament of Power in the form of the cold and prideful Jiren, a warrior from Universe 11 who is the final obstacle between the warriors of Universe 7 and a wish from the newly introduced Super Dragon Balls. And following with the series' trend, even Jiren is not entirely villainous, caring deeply about his own universe, to his own detriment. Though by the end of the tournament, he seems to have learned a few lessons and if the series continues, will likely be something of a friendly antagonist, like Hit. Maybe. With the introduction of a multiverse, gods of destruction, and a new cross-universe tournament, there are enough new villains and general antagonists in Super to warrant their own video. Oh, and there's an evil Goku. More on that later. Those aforementioned gods of destruction and the new universes in Dragon Ball Super do a lot to flesh out the world of Dragon Ball far beyond ground covered in previous iterations of the franchise. Beerus is the series' initial antagonist and the first god of destruction introduced to viewers, which is a godly being that's something of a foil to the godly Kais who protect their respective universes. The gods of destruction destroy planets or alien races in order to balance creation with destruction. Once the idea of 12 universes was introduced to the series, each universe with its own god of destruction and supreme Kai, the world of Dragon Ball was essentially multiplied times 12. Additionally, following the trend of returning to classic elements of DBZ, one of Super's arcs is centered on the return of future Trunks and a villainous Goku of sorts named Goku Black, which is sort of the perfect idea for a Dragon Ball villain. Take the strongest sand warrior in the universe and make him evil. Just like in GT, Android 17 comes back too for the 12 universe wide tournament of power, but as a hero this time around, having been keeping watch on a wildlife reserve on a remote island. GT introduces a new set of Dragon Balls too, right off the bat, the Black Star Dragon Balls, which are also a stronger version of the Dragon Balls. The Dragon Balls, from which the series gets its name, are also the basis of GT's climactic arc, which turns a series convention on its head as the Dragon Balls are no longer just a source of wish granting, but capable of unleashing a powerful evil in the form of one evil dragon per Dragon Ball. As this was meant to be the conclusion to all of Dragon Ball at the time, it makes a certain logical sense that Dragon Balls themselves would spawn the series' climactic big bad villains. Meanwhile, Super introduces its own set of Dragon Balls called, naturally, the Super Dragon Balls. Each of these is as big as a planet, and they're located in both universes 6 and 7. Super Shenron, the new wish-granting dragon summoned by gathering all of these new humongous Dragon Balls, is as big as multiple galaxies, and his wish granting capabilities more powerful than that of Shenron and the Namekian Purunga introduced previously. It's commonly known to fans of both series that the original Dragon Ball is more lighthearted and comedic, while Dragon Ball Z is more serious, or as serious as a series about power levels and evil aliens can be. Dragon Ball GT attempted to capture both these sides of the Dragon Ball coin, 
by opening the show with a newly young Goku on a classic hunt for the Dragon Balls. It's tone, lighthearted, and fun before introducing some new world-threatening villains. With Goku being younger, the GT series feels like it was set back to that time of Dragon Ball, quite literally with Goku being a child again. Power levels are down too. Rather than juggle all that came before it, Dragon Ball Super attempted something simpler, a return to the lightheartedness of Dragon Ball. Beerus, for example, who was introduced as a being with powers greater than ever before seen in the world of Dragon Ball, is also the source of a lot of slapstick comedy, thanks to his gourmet appetite and cat-like indifference to things. There are multiple direct callbacks to Dragon Ball and DBZ, whether it be Krillin and Goku talking about their growth and their friendship, or Master Roshi reminiscing, literally showing footage from Dragon Ball, and the OG fight between Goku and Frieza getting a fresh makeover in new animation. They reanimated key parts for Super. In addition to looking to its past, Super makes some updates to the formula as well. For example, introducing a significant number of powerful female characters, which the series had totally been lacking outside of a few notable exceptions, giving the series a firm foothold in the present and into the future. There is now a whole lot of Dragon Ball between the original series, its iconic sequel, and the two sequel series to that sequel. Poof, that's a mouthful. By the way, while it's widely assumed that GT is no longer canon, there's been no official statement by anyone of importance, so feel free to pick whichever sequel you prefer, and consider that the true continuation of the Dragon Ball franchise. Dragon Ball video games have also changed quite a bit over the years. From the Budokai games all the way up to Fighters, the fans of this universe have always been blessed with some awesome video game adaptations. Let's take a look at how things have evolved in the interactive digital realm. Background and Release Dragon Ball Z was a cultural phenomenon circulating throughout every 90s kid's childhood. Toonami made sure pretty much every youngster in the early aughts had a Dragon Ball phase, even the not weird ones. So, the first DBZ game that comes to mind is the original Dragon Ball Z Budokai, released in the West in 2002 for the PlayStation 2 and then on the Nintendo GameCube in 2003. But Budokai was far from the first video game made for the Dragon Ball franchise. In fact, there was a long and illustrious history of weird Dragon Ball games, and we'll happily run down that list with the utmost terror in our eyes. The distinction of being the very first game based on the Dragon Ball franchise belongs to Dragon Ball Dragon Daihikyo, released on September 27, 1986 for the Epoch Super Cassette Vision. However, this game couldn't contend with the first Dragon Ball game to come stateside, Dragon Ball Shenlong no Nazo. This game was an oddball Zelda knockoff and was imported to North America in March of 1988 as Dragon Power. It's bizarre to look at. Parts of the game look like Dragon Ball but sort of surreally off. For example, they put a headband on Goku and made him look more like a monkey. Maybe the developers were trying to make more after Journey to the West and make him similar to Sun Wukong? Whatever the reason, he's on an epic journey to collect the Crystal Balls. Huh? There are approximately 44 billion other Dragon Ball games released across the NES, Super NES, Sega Saturn, Famicom, Wonder Swan Color, Sega System 32, Mega Drive, PS2, PS3, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, GameCube, Original Xbox, Xbox 360. <sighs> Need we go on? So rest assured that Budokai wasn't even the first fighting game released for the franchise. That distinction belongs to Dragon Ball Z Genko Takachi Budokai, released in December of 1992 for the Famicom. However, the first fighting game to gain any real traction was probably Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Battle 22 for the Sony PlayStation, which was released in Europe in 1996. And it was terrible. No, really. GameSpot gave it a 1.2 out of 10, calling it, and we quote, a really, really terrible game. Dragon Ball GT Final Bout followed this atrocity in 1997, which many fans claim was marginally better, but still pretty bad. And finally, in 2002, there was the release of Dragon Ball Z Budokai. All that said, Budokai and its follow-ups were undoubtedly the breakthroughs in North America. Given that Dragon Ball Z is a show about superhumans fighting each other, by the time the PS2 was released, graphics and gameplay had finally caught up to the point where players didn't have to be JRPGing their way through super killer fight scenes. It only took 20 years. Budokai spawned three sequels released between 2002 and 2004. Dragon Ball Fighters released worldwide for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC on January 26, 2018, and shows early signs of phenomenal success. So that's a little context for all of our viewers out there. Now, let's get into the meat of this whole bout, the differences. Character Selection The original Dragon Ball Z Budokai shipped with 23 selectable fighting characters, covering everyone up to the Android Saga. You would unlock many of these selections by completing story mode and world tournament on various difficulties, much in the style of classic fighting games. For Budokai 2, this selection increased up to the Kid Buu Saga. 
bringing it to a total of 34 playable characters. By the time Dragon Ball Z Budokai 3 released, the roster had ballooned to 44 selectable from the start. Most fans consider Budokai 3 the best game in the Budokai series, featuring characters from both the previous games as well as Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT, and the Dragon Ball Z movies. According to the official release roster of Dragon Ball Fighters, the number of selectable characters currently sits at 24, which includes all of the series mainstays. That's Vegeta, Gohan, Krillin, Goku, the androids, and Beerus? Cool. Now, it's worth mentioning that the number of player selects is smaller than the original Budokai, but there is zero doubt that this number has the potential of expanding upon the DLC release. The most recent Dragon Ball Z game, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, had over a dozen fighters released as DLC. So us Dragon Ball fans can only hope. Gameplay and Play Modes Structured like the seven titular Dragon Balls of the show's title, Dragon Ball Z Budokai shipped with seven game modes available for players. A significant highlight of such levels is the story mode, which allows players to fight through the Dragon Ball Z storyline as various selectable characters and relive the best moments of the television show. There's also Versus mode, allowing for co-op gameplay and the World Tournament, a tree-based elimination tournament mode. Edit skills enables players to customize their fighters more to their liking, and in the unlockable Legend of Hercule mode, gamers assume the role of Hercule and fight their way through the tournament to victory. Of these primary ways, story mode was unmistakably the standout. The presentation of the story that fans had come to know and love was rightfully the main draw, and Budokai didn't disappoint. Come on guys, you get to play as Goku, and it finally feels rather good. Remember those other Dragon Ball games? Be happy. The original Budokai released to somewhat mixed reviews. It was universally agreed upon that the game perfectly captured the look and feel of the TV show, but many found the actual fighting system somewhat slim. To quote the contemporaneous IGN review, the game never quite grows beyond the Neanderthal techniques you begin with. Or rather, when it does, it doesn't make much of a difference. Multi-hit combos don't do that much more damage than a well-placed single hit. Budokai 2 confusingly ditched the story mode of Budokai 1 in favor of something called Dragon World. The setup was akin to a board game that allowed navigation with Goku and several selectable buddy characters on a quest to collect the 7 Dragon Balls. The game is similar to Mario Party, but you virtually fight DBZ enemies instead of actually fighting your childhood friends and significant others. No one was a fan of that aspect of the game. The game upgraded to cell shaded graphics which brought the game even closer to looking like the TV show. Fusion characters were also added. Added, purchasable through in-game currency. Players couldn't select fusion characters in the menu like standard fighting games, but they could perform a unique combo with individual characters at a specific time. And voila, Gotenks has entered the bout. Other than Gotenks, Budokai 2 also allowed players to enjoy a handful of what-if fusions. If you ever wonder what a fusion between Yamcha and Tien would look like, then Budokai 2 had your answer with Tiencha, a muscular three-eyed man with a receding hairline. It's pretty much agreed that Budokai 3 solved all the problems its predecessors had. Story mode was back and more dynamic than ever in a mode called Dragon Universe, a free roaming 3D environment which incorporated story elements from across all the Dragon Ball sagas. Multiple characters were playable and even some RPG light leveling came to the scene. The most important changes though were the ones made under the hood. Introducing fatigue meters. Movesets entered hyper mode, with it dragon rushes and ultimate attacks which added a lot more depth and strategy to the gameplay. But hardcore Budokai players couldn't get down with Dragon Rushes, as they were so easy to use and didn't require a lot of skill. Teleport counters became a thing, as did beam struggles, and an overall improvement in the speed of fighting. With this third entry, Budokai had taken a significant step towards graduating beyond the button-mashing insults its detractors laid at its feet. With Dragon Ball Fighters, this bid for reputability hit even more severely. First and foremost, Fighters was developed by Arc System Works, while ASW has produced a few handheld DBZ games before Fighters, fans probably know them best for Blaze Blue and the fighting franchise juggernaut Guilty Gear, both highly regarded by the fighting game community. The fighting mechanics are considerably refined as well. Even just watching footage of Fighters, it's shocking how fast and smooth and honest to god technical it looks. Some elements borrow from the Marvel vs. Capcom series including 3-man tag teams. Another element that might be more familiar to fighting game aficionados and more foreign to those who cut their teeth with Budokai is the total reworking of the control scheme. Now the controls juggle a system of light, medium, and massive attacks, with the fourth button mapped into projectiles. 
New to the franchise are homing attacks, presumably to make aerial combat more fluid and make gravity feel less important. This critical detail goes with the show's illusion that Saiyans have never actually walked on solid ground. Fighters also introduced something called a Sparking Blast, similar to the X Factor from Marvel vs. Capcom 3. It's a comeback mechanic that gives your character a temporary and significant stats boost and refills the player's blue health gauge. While ASW did cater to fighting fans, they also made sure that Fighter's gameplay was the most character-accurate Dragon Ball fighting game ever. The game splendidly makes each playable fighter's movements fall closer in line with how they actually move in the anime and manga. Everything from how a character punches to their gait has been perfected to the point of congruency between the game and how the movements were originally seen. ASW scoured all forms of Dragon Ball media when looking for references to use in Fighters. Unique to Fighters is a brand new Dragon Ball story. While the Budokai games were more or less retreads of the anime, albeit sometimes from different perspectives, Fighters has an original narrative featuring a brand new character, Android 21, who was designed by Dragon Ball creator Akira Toriyama, specifically for this game. Round up and looking forward. When it comes to fighters, is there anything besides gorgeous gameplay footage and an esteemed pedigree that indicates a quality game? I mean, first off, what more do you need? Secondly, yes. Fighters won the best fighting game of E3 2017 from the Game Critics Awards far before its official release. A playable demo was also made available to some of the champs at the Evolution Champion Series 2017, the world's largest fighting game tournament. Feedback from the famously discerning champs was mostly positive. No longer was it, oh, you play that because you like anime with the hair. Nope. We're talking hitboxes, zone control, considering the verticality of the playing field versus the horizontal plane, and a multitude of gaming mechanics. This wasn't a dismissal, but a genuine discussion of how fighters will fit seriously into the hardcore fighting genre. That means that after all these years, it looks like Dragon Ball's fighting franchise can finally sit at the big kid's table. Respect has been earned with sweat and blood and a whole lot of key blasts. Congratulations, Dragon Ball. Welcome to the fight. And there you have it. So many facts, so much information. It's kind of like we stuffed all of this Dragon Ball knowledge into a Capsule Corp capsule. Did you learn anything new about the series today? Which video is your favorite? Make sure you let us know down in the comments and subscribe to Channel Frederator for more like this. Thanks for watching and remember, Frederator loves you.